fortunately or unfortunately, I realized when I was very young that I, I was gonna die. You know, not oh. like I'm dying now, but like not. You, know. you, you were in a severe like I condition. Was, no, no, no. That's the thing. I wasn't into. Uh, fortunately for me, like a very bad case of cancer and anything like this. Like you know, many kids have, unfortunately. But I still remember the moment I was actually in the shower at my parents' old house, and I was six, seven, eight. I don't know that age. Mm. And I realized that myself. Maybe people were dying around me. I'm not sure. Maybe at the time, the great granddad and the neighbor or something. And I realized, yeah, I'm gonna die. As in, I'm not gonna be here forever. And at the time I was thinking, my God, I can't, you know, I won't be able to watch my cartoons and they're gonna still play them and I won't be there to watch. What's, what's that about? That's effed up, you know? My name is Putin Khan and you're watching Khan Vision Podcast. In this podcast, we share interesting stories and unique perspectives. Today, my guest is Johan. Johan is a host of a podcast called Sulia Tutovet which means roughly translated in English, closed doors. It's a French play. I can't really remember where it comes from, but Jan will be explaining this in this podcast. On this episode, Jan is going to share some interesting stories from his life and how did he end up coming to a country called Finland. BJJ, also known as Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, is a huge part of Jan's life. And on this podcast, Johan is going to explain why BJJ is the ultimate solution for life. So grab your gi and get ready for this episode. Boom! Like in English, they say, when there is a will, there is a way. Mm -hmm. So if you can't get your Christmas, uh, uh, Christmas presents mm -hmm. on time, mm -hmm. it might mean that you have to watch, mm -hmm. you know, watch yourself in the mirror and think, why you are a bad boy yeah, <laughs> or yeah, a girl yeah, yeah. or whatever you want to sure. identify yeah. yourself with. <laughs> what what do you say, Johan? <laughs> Johan. Johan. Yeah. Depends on where you're from, I said, you know, it's Johan, Johan, it's like Johan. Every, There's a lot of people you know? who get uh, really annoyed if someone pronounces their name in the wrong way. Okay, yeah. I mean, you don't, but I'm saying that... No, the, because I know it's, it's not, you know... Common name. It, 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 it depends on, what, again, it depends on where you're from, you know, yeah. whether you're American, English, or... Like I said, some, some English people, they're, Johan, you know, very like this, like very... Uh, <laughs> And then I was like, Johan, like very like strict, like, Johan, you know, based Johan, you know. Johan. Like, yeah, Johan. Johan. Again, because it's why it comes, it actually comes from a Dutch football player, Johan Cruyff. Mm. He's dead now, he died like maybe four or five years ago. But uh, in France, we have that name actually, Johan, but we never pronounce H mm. or the H in, in French, so that's why it's Johan. So it came from that so player? It came from the or... first football player, my, my mom was pregnant, my dad was a Great fan of these guys. Okay, that's going to be Johan. Okay, all right, that's it. And that's why it's spelled this way. Only five letters. Because in French, sometimes you have two N's at the end. Mm. So, yeah. <laughs> it's very interesting where the names come from or or why do people decide to give certain names? I know. Now, mm. now I started to think that, for example, if you look at my family, mm -hmm. you know, all of the names have something to do with the religion or religiosity. Yeah, and then yeah, there yeah. are other families, mm -hmm. even, you mm -hmm. know, on Europe that might have like Christian or, you mm -hmm. know, like mm -hmm. Noah or mm -hmm. something like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And then there are other people who might give, uh, I guess it, whatever means dear to you, whatever you are into, you kind of mm -hmm. incline towards that. Yeah. I mean, for us, that's for my son, for example, it's only. Mm. It's, it's Finnish, 100%. You know? yeah. But you, he, he, it had to be a name that you can pronounce in French as well. Just mm. for the sake of my parents. Mm. And they call him Oni. Because again, in French, we don't pronounce double N's or anything like this. You know? oh. So it's not Oni. Like, Oni, Oni, Oni. Like this. You know? <laughs> yeah. Maybe myself sometimes as well. But it, yeah, so it was easy to pronounce, you know. I have the weirdest name ever. <laughs> So for, right. let me explain. My name is actually, I'll show you my ID card. That's even more confusing once you see my ID card. So as you can see, so Khan is very common. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you have yeah. MD dot okay. Muttaki. Okay. And, and Muttaki is written M-U-T-T-A-Q-I. Mm -hmm. So what is the MD? I'm not a doctor. <laughs> I wish I was. <laughs> you it's know. usually at the end. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, it it comes. It's a 
Indo-Pak thing, like in okay. Indian Pakistanis and Bangladeshis Muslims, they so it's like a luhenne. Uh, what's yeah, luhenne? like a short, like a shortcut shorter. for yeah, Muhammad. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah so I was going to say, yeah, MD Muhammad. Yeah, sounds yeah. like it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, oh. it's a very confusing in Finland because we Bengali Indians and and Pakistanis, we yeah. are not the yeah, majority yeah. of the yeah. Muslims. Mm. So whenever uh, I remember when I was in the army and we were doing like everyone. Uh, addresses you with your mm, surname mm, so I mm. used to be you know private Khan mm, mm. right so um, but then we had this uh, <laughs> um, like checking of the guns because you know yep, someone yeah, did yeah. miscalculation mm, so mm. you know everyone out and we have to like calculate the guns and mm. and now several several people might have the same surname right uh, so then they used to you know pronounce their first name mm-hmm. and the last name mm-hmm. and when it came to my part mm-hmm. the guy was like what the hell <laughs> you know <laughs> he was like <laughs> like i saw his face uh, uh, he was yeah. like what is this yeah. then he was yeah. like m mm. and d mm. and khan <laughs> i was like oh damn yeah, it's, it's me, me. <laughs> you know <laughs> and then everyone's like is your name really md, MD. i was like yeah. oh man yeah. i'm an artist yeah <laughs> <laughs> The, the, I have thought about getting my name like changed. reconstructed, right. but then I think you know, let right. it be weird that it is. Identity, you know? Yeah, but if you go to Spain, you know, it's, you know, they're very, very Christian as well over there, very religious. And we have many uh, ladies' name. The first name is Maria mm. for Marie, you know, the Virgin Mary. So it's Maria something, Maria something, Maria something. But many times you're going to drop the Maria and you just refer to them by the the second the, the second, name. second name. But it's still Maria something. Mm. It's very very common, very very common. But again, yeah, yeah it's like that's really related to yeah religion. The, you know. Yeah, I understand, but I think if if I wanted to give my son's son's name a Muhammad, then mm-hmm. I'll just give the whole Muhammad yeah, name. Muhammad, you yeah. know, okay, then call him, you know, yeah. mm. Muhammad or mm. call him a Noah mm. or mm. call him something. Mm. Right, I think it's But a... giving a name that doesn't have any effect yeah. Yeah, yeah, is yeah. kind of superficial, you know, yeah. you just yeah. keep it there because it's a custom and stuff like that. It doesn't have any practicality. I, I mean, there's no right or wrong in this mm. answer, mm. but mm. I feel it's kind of, confusing people it, yeah in my yeah, party it sounds like it's a title yeah it's kind mm-hmm. of a title yeah, thing yeah, yeah and i was like you know i've been discussing this with my wife and you know she always laughs at me and i'm like you know what because i had to go through this in my life mm. i'm gonna put my son's name muhammad md as well mm-hmm. you know let it pass on <laughs> yeah why not you know in but Finnish, funny. they say, you yeah. know, like, yeah, yeah. let the evil yeah, yeah. spread. Yeah, yeah. Just like, <laughs> well, obviously, it's yeah. not an evil, but, no, no. but you know, it is yeah, what I get, it is. I get what you mean. Yeah. But Johan, hey, thank you for coming to my podcast mm-hmm. at my house. Mm-hmm. Welcome. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. First podcast, actually, for me as a, as guest. a guest. Yeah. Okay. Ever, ever. In any, first any for language. everything, right? Yeah, any language, yeah. And I think I was yeah. a first podcast guest, like if... If the ra- radio stations don't count, but as a podcast, well, podcast. I had this, I had the uh, Yoni Yakola was his own podcast as well. I had him. And what do you mean? I was in yes, your, yes, yes, you know, as yes, a yes. fellow collaboration. Yeah, yeah, I never yeah, done yeah. that yeah, yeah. Uh, for you. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. So it's a special moment for that's both good. of us. Yeah, I think I think that's well. It came from you, so I think it's good for you reaching out to the podcast community and do all this so we can be together yeah 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 because yeah. i find it it's fascinating yeah. and it's because of your bjj brazilian jiu-jitsu that mm-hmm. i was like okay this guy must be cool cool of, as yeah. af no, because <clears throat> he's doing bjj i'm mm-hmm. a huge fan of bjj i okay. haven't done it myself mm-hmm. i do practice or grapple every now and then mm-hmm. but I, w- once i saw like the bjj mm-hmm. um, you were wearing the geese mm-hmm. the whole uniform and I was like, okay, I want to get into his podcast. Okay. We might have a very interesting conversation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so that's yeah. kind of sparked my attention. Right, okay. <laughs> I was like, Sulietut Ovid. Well, mm. Johan's, uh, Johan's, Johan's podcast is Sulietut Ovid. And we'll get to that mm-hmm. podcast in a, in a bit. Mm-hmm. But um, I was like, okay, what is that? A very interesting name. Mm-hmm. It does, you know, create some kind of a reaction in me. Mm-hmm. That's, and that's, that's exactly what I wanted. I was like, Surya <laughs> Dutovit. Because, you know, to me, I don't know what I thought about it, but I was okay. like, there's something deep about this. Okay, yeah. 
oh, something okay. mysterious cool. about this because <laughs> we always want to know what's behind the door yeah, exactly right? yeah. and then I, uh, but i never understood <laughs> what it really means and the play mm. that you were saying and yeah. i'll get you know let you do that mm. but before we mm. go that let you know introduce us to yourself that uh, basically for my audience who is yoan oh uh-huh. a good question yeah Ah, where do I start? Started on a uh, rainy Wednesday evening, you know, 1981. Well, I don't know. That's <laughs> when I was born anyway. Um, who am I? I'm French originally. We moved here with my family about six and a half years ago. Mm. <clears throat> that was in July, six years ago. From France, but we had lived together in London but without the kid. And then before that, we met actually in Prague as students. So I've lived in a few different countries in the last 20 plus years as a student, as an entrepreneur, as an employee as well. So I've got all that, yeah, all that range. And again, Czech Republic, London, England and France and then now Finland. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it really. <laughs> so uh, I found out that you're doing um, well when I did discover that when I came to your uh, podcast. Mm-hmm cave or whatever you want to say <laughs> that's my practice pra- yeah. that's my sacred place if there's one to be that's other than podcast that's my second home oh, well second yeah. and a half yes because that's where i practice uh etiopathy and uh, massage therapy sports right. massage so etiopathy is about trying to find a, the root cause of the issue mm. when people come in so it's a mixture of physiotherapy osteopathy chiropractic all this do you you do osteopathy it's that part of etiopathy yeah, a bit. I'm not an osteopath, but I'm an etiopath. It's, it's slightly different. But you have like a little bit of an... You have to it's like all kind across. of get into it's, it's, their... It's, it's, it's like many different disciplines mm. all together in one, basically. So I don't, don't just treat one muscle or bone or in this anyway. You treat the whole person. Mm. So it's usually physical and spiritual if you're into that kind of stuff if you mm. want and then mental all that it's a it's a complete package so you go a little bit beyond your own just in, of course yeah, yeah. It's and, a, and that's really it's good it's a human being you're dealing with <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> with feelings you know no kids or not and husband or wives or anything like this so you have to take everything into account the work the way they feel everything unfortunately i can't say for the same for everyone but the idea for me is that about people who are into the massage therapy or hello here on time finish we call mm-hmm. there are two categories either you are really good at it mm-hmm. or you are you know are you cuz i don't really know about it but mm-hmm. you know the people that i've been with they're really good at it and they're into it they mm-hmm. kind of love that as a, mm-hmm. as a passion mm-hmm. and to hear that you are willing to go you know further and beyond just the place of uh, physiotherapy Mm -hmm. it so shows a wisdom and i might be interested to actually come to your place yeah i mean that would be nice there's nothing mythical about it or anything it's just you treat the person yeah yeah, yeah. it's a matter of asking something very simple like how are you how do you sleep Mm -hmm. how is it at home you don't have to give me all the details just like a few things and you'd be surprised how many times people are happy to talk Mm. about anything yeah, that's true. why because they want to be heard. That's that's the big big thing, you know. And I can't be like, oh, sorry, I don't have time for that. Yeah, of course I do. That's what I'm here for. Mm. Yeah, just go ahead. What, what's you know what's on your mind? What's going on? And you'll find out that many many times, you know. Again, for me, the muscles or bones or whatever, it's just a byproduct of whatever you're feeling or whatever the state you are in at the moment. Yeah, you know, they just they don't react like this. I mean, they they are told what to do. The muscles, but the, I always say that to everyone who comes by the central nervous system. That's where everything starts, and you have to really understand that you can't talk to the muscle. Mm. You talk through the muscle, whatever structure you want to treat, but you talk to the person into the nervous system, governing body. You know, but that's that's missed by many many people. And again, I'm not like some special person. No, no, it's just you know. Deal with a human being. That's just first step. Yeah. Build a relationship. That's with everything in your life. Build a relationship. Mm. And a true one. Not like, oh, you know, I want to get everything I can out of him or her. No, no, no. Build a relationship. That's what they want. They want you to care. And I care. I do mm. care. Maybe too much sometimes. So yeah. you have to find a balance. But you have to care. Of course you have to care. Yeah. You're dealing with people. You're dealing with feelings. It's, it's, you know, it's even stupid for me to say that. Like, oh, remember, you're dealing with people. You don't treat the shoulder. You treat the person. Of course you do. How else? Mm. Look, it's my two o'clock shoulder coming in. Nah. 
Yeah. Okay, Mutaki is coming. I don't know what's going on. Let's see. Let's have a look. Mm. Shoulder. Okay, move around. Perfect. Good. Well, how are you feeling? Well, actually pretty bad, you know, it's the situation, COVID and stuff. All right, okay. Mm. Mm. Don't you think it's a bit, you know, related? Maybe there's something going on, you know? Yeah, of course, you might have something on the shoulder there, but is it like life-threatening? Mm, I don't think so. Keep moving. <laughs> keep yeah. moving. That's what I always say. Keep moving. Who cares? Keep moving. Do what you can. Mm. At, oh, you see, I was working this morning. I was talking to one lady that came for knee. I've been seeing her. She's been doing great. And she's a jiu-jitsu person as well. And I told her, okay, by Christmas, you're back on the mats with your gi. Whatever happens, you know, you do one roll. I don't care. You do one thing. But you put the gi back on. And that's that's very important. That's very, very important. <clears throat> Otherwise, your brain is going to give up before the body. That's 100%. Mm. 100%. Why how many times that? you roll? Why? Because that's what governs everything is the brain, you know? I mean, you know, what do you think, you know, they can go on forever running marathons and stuff? My brain is so weak, I couldn't even run a marathon, you know? Mm. Because I'm like, hey, what the point? After 10 kilometers, okay, I'm done, you know? Do you think my muscles are going to give up? No way. No mm. way. No way. The brain is giving up. And actually, the the body can go on for a very long time without it's, it's, it's just, without food and water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like super resistant. The human body is amazing. Yeah. Amazing. It just reacts to everything. They have this thing called neuroplasticity, which is just adapting to whatever you have around you. Yeah. What do you think with so many different shapes and sizes and living all over the world? Yeah. You know? Like uh, 40 degrees plus, minus degrees plus, because that's the human body. That's what it does. And it adapts to everything. You know, if you look at with the Chinese ladies and putting the shoes on because they were told, like, apparently, you know, it's not good to have long feet. Well, they put, like, very tight shoes and then the feet don't grow. Well, again, the body adapts. How do you think they're going to grow wrong? They're going to grow high. And that's what happens. So again, the body, is, the human body is just as strong as hell, the strongest thing ever. The yeah. mind is the one that you need to be concerned about. <laughs> In what sense? That how to make it strong or? Yeah, how to make it strong, how to make it... Uh, how to resistant or to make it resilient or to make it uh how to service it yeah 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 in a way, to, in, in, a way. in a way that you have in a, a car and you need yeah. to take your car well, to of a course service. yeah yeah one way yeah yeah of course you yeah, can yeah. always run in you know yeah, no. the certain like, well like pace. like what we call the monkey brain you know mm. and it just runs on its own that's not going to work very well for a very long time you know and over the years, that's what, you know, that's what I've seen. It's just about what like, what's in between your ears, you know. That's what comments the rest. I want to go back on the topic of treating people with, you know, listening to people or treating mm -hmm. people the way you say. You mm -hmm. don't see just a shoulder coming mm -hmm. or or lower back pain is coming to my ah, care. That's the, that's the big one. Lower <laughs> back pain. Oh, you know, we don't know. We don't know. We don't know. If you follow the physical therapy, well, we don't know. I've been treating lower back pain for 50 years. We don't know. We don't know. Mm. Yeah, of course. It's very complicated. Mm. Pain. And one thing many people tend to forget, it's highly individual. Mm. Highly individual. But my point you know? is not the lower back, but the whenever you have a patient mm. coming, coming yeah. And then you have to remind yourself that, okay, this is a human being that I'm treating the person through the lower back pain mm -hmm. and taking mm -hmm. consideration mm -hmm. all this stuff. You know, some of the days I feel like, hopefully not today with you, but some, some days I feel like when the podcast person, you know, the, the guest is coming to mm -hmm. my podcast mm -hmm. and I feel like, oh, you know what, I just want to get this podcast done mm -hmm. and, and buy. Yeah, I don't want to talk to you more, yeah, yeah. no more than that. <laughs> I hope you don't feel this way no, today no, when okay. you came no, to my place. No, no, all, I, no. I try to put up the best I can. Mm -hmm. um, but how, where did you get this realization? Because you saying that to me is not, I could, uh, I took your message in your field that it's about the person, not about the shoulder pain mm -hmm. or fixing the shoulder pain. Mm -hmm. uh, the way I took it for myself is like, it's not about the podcast. It's mm -hmm. about connecting with this mm -hmm. person, exactly. right? Yeah. And this is something that I, I just realized that I was like, there's no point of me having a podcast and bye-bye, superficial, mm -hmm. whatever, mm -hmm. if mm -hmm. I don't really care for the person. Mm -hmm. Where did you get this idea? When mm -hmm. did this click in your head? I, I bet this. I think it's it, it's probably been buried in my head for a very very long time. <clears throat> I would think, because I was, um, uh, you know, I mean, where I was from in France, the doctor I've had, uh, he saw my son, he saw my grandma, who's now dead. 
he saw all of us. He was the family doctor, you know. He knew me from very young. He saw me, he saw me growing up and all that kind of same for my brother. And then he was always like, he was part of the family in one way. So I think that's that kind of relationship I have with like healthcare, if you want. Same for the dentist. Mm. You almost, you know, feel very bad when you heard that your dentist died. Well, you know, I was 10 years old. He was already 60 or about to turn 60. So what do you think? He's going to live until 100? No, because it's part of, not really part of the family, but it's it's part of your inner circle, if you want. Yeah. So I think that's where it came from for me, the whole with the healthcare relation. And then because I had a chat with us, some other like healthcare providers. And that's what I said. I said, you see, I think I was very lucky at some point because, or even my osteopath that I still see in France when I go. Again, the, the doctor, dentist, all of the and the physiotherapists as well. All these ones, they saw, well, they saw me from like yeah, toddler all the way up. You know, some of them they started in a business. My doctor started in a business when I was born. If you think about it, mm. I'm soon to be forty. He's retired now, but like his old career, I saw just him because that's what you do. You see your own doctor, and again that relationship. And for me, it was always this way: healthcare. I can relate to that you know? a, a little bit. Whenever I go to Bangladesh. Mm. And I see like my mom and dad, like this same doctor treating my grandma, treating my dad, mm -hmm. treating my mm -hmm. mom, you know, mm -hmm. if something happens and mm -hmm. other relatives and we kind of build the trust on this certain doctor. You, you just said it. Yeah. You see, what do you do when you and we build relationships? And we invite him over, you know, you like go. for Eid and whatever. What, what do you have. do when you build relationship you or start relationships? To care for well, those. you build the trust. Oh. How much does it cost trust? You can't even put a price on it, you know? And that's, I think that's, that's, that's what you have to do. Build a relationship, whatever it is in your life, build a relationship for whatever, with your boss, with your subordinates, with anyone, with you, with your friends, you know, you want, and in real ones, not like because I want something out of him or her, like I said before, you want to build a relationship because then they can trust you. Mm. And again, that's, there's no, no value to that. No value to that. Unfortunately, when it comes to Finland, and I'm not like criticizing, there's a lot of beautiful things about Finland. Mm. There is no other mm. place that I would rather live mm. than Finland. But when it comes to, it's not Finnish problem. It's a global problem that everyone, everything is standardized mm. and, you know, everything is like um, mass produced yeah, in a yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah. The way, even the healthcare, mm. you know. I, yeah, there's I no don't personality. Have, yeah. No, I don't have yeah. any kind of, uh, more like I think like, what the hell this other person is thinking about mm -hmm. me? Mm -hmm. How can I say this, you know? And mm -hmm. going to someone and talking about your body mm -hmm. is very personal mm -hmm. matter. And I feel it's very <laughs> awkward to yeah. talk of with course. someone you don't know. And again, I'm not blaming anyone. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not saying, oh, you know, they're doing a bad job or whatever. Big, some of them is because that's the way we were taught as well. But then again, like, as you said, you know, maybe some of them, they're like 20 patients to see in three hours. Mm -hmm. I know one guy who works in Austria, he only has 25 minutes with his, each patient. He's a physiotherapist. Pa, pa, pa. <laughs> well, you know, whatever. Oh, well, yeah, do this exercise. Go, go, go. And that's it. I mean, how do you want to build I, a relationship? I like imagine this, you know? in my head, like having, a, you know, a fish and then you make a fillet. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> hey, here, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. boxed and wrapped mm. with the tag on it. Mm. You just go and pay for mm. it. And but that's, you know, I had a knee surgery two years ago. I went very good care. Uh, pff, nothing to say. Really, 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 really happy. Of course, I pay with my insurance. I have to. Mm. I had the physio. Very good guy. Very nice. He agreed to speak English as well with me because I wasn't too comfortable in Finnish. Mm. Very available. But you see that the, the exercises he gave me, you know, he put them on a dodgy, like we say, like a piece of paper that looks like nothing. And he says knee, you know. Well, my name is not Ni, my name is Johan. But again, mm. I, I wasn't really, I want to talk about it because it's something, I think that's important, you know. Mm. I was telling him, I want did to go back say, to jiu-jitsu. Did he say no, Ni to you? No, 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 but you know what the, I mean, the on, the, on, on was, the paper, you know, yeah. but it should be my name or whatever, you know, because, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. I know he's, he's got like 20 before me, 20 after me. But that's, but again, he was a great guy, always available. I could send him an email, call him or anything like this. But just all this is the whole experience. Mm. And then I told everyone I see, I say, okay, the first thing I say, okay, you've had the injury. What do you want to do? Oh, well, well, I want my shoulder to get better. No, no, I'm not talking about that. Of course, it will get better. What do you want to do? Do you want to lift one million kilos? You know, do you want to, many times I touch to the family. It's okay. You want to play with the kids again, don't you? Yeah, of course I do. Well, there you go. That's, that's the priority. Okay. Let's put a what date on it. What kind of a goal you have? Let's, that's it. Let's put a date on it. Yeah. Mm. I don't care. Something realistic. 
but you have to put a date on it, you know, buy a, an agenda, whatever, write it down, <laughs> diary, I'm going to go back there. That's why I think that's the way it should be done. Mm. I think that's the way it should be done. Yeah. 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 It's find what they want. The pain is there. It will be there, but find what, what do you want? But they can't tell you. It, maybe you can, they can in the first time, but usually you have to dig a bit deeper. And again, that's where you build a relationship. What do you think is, uh, how do one person take another person? Uh, how do you receive a person? Be available, or you know, the whole experience. That how do you care for another person? Because you don't want to come up too caring. Listen. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Listen. Yeah. You know, some people said like, I mean, we talked about it on my podcast about God and all this, mm. which I respect, but they say, oh, you know, they give you one mouth, but two ears. What do you think that is? Mm. It's like very common thing to say like, oh, you know, that's why you have two ears and one mouth because you're supposed to listen more than you speak. As I told you last time, you know, when you speak, when you speak to me, I know what I know and I know what you know. Mm. So I'm the winner <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in one way, you know, so that's why, you know, let them speak. But again, mm. you have to give them, but listen, Start it up. and care and listen, really listen. You know, that's a million times more important than the exercise you're going to give them. Yeah. The exercise is a little icing on the cake, you know? Yeah. But if you can connect to the person, oh, that's the whole key. if you can, yeah. it's the communication. But again, how do you deliver not... a message in a way that yeah. it really <clears throat> has an effect? That's the whole simple, not easy. Why? Because <laughs> you're dealing with people. Mm. And that's that's the worst. I don't know what you want to call it, but mm. that's the worst kind of thing you can deal with is people because they're just predictable. Everything is just so complicated. You know, mm. they so complicated. Some, sometimes people don't even themselves know. No, no, of course, them. yeah, yeah. But it's so it's, you, know, you know, it's so complicated. But I think that's what I like about it. Mm. I, maybe the challenge, but I just I don't know. Maybe I just like people. I care about people, and I want to help. You know, that's I think that's the whole idea. Usually, people in our profession like physical therapy, whatever you want to call it. It's because we want to help. Mm. Mm. I don't mm. care, you know, uh, I told many people, my actually like ultimate goal is for me to be out of job, mm. you know, because then you know what to do. Mm. Yeah, I'll give you the keys, you know, but, oh, fix me. No, I don't fix you. Is there anything that's like, any way broken? Well, not really, no, unless you have a broken leg, but I don't fix you. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Too much pressure. Sorry, I don't want to have that. You fix yourself. Mm. Or you, you make yourself better. I can cook the food for you. I can buy the food. I can't eat it for you. You have to eat it if you want to put on weight, if you want to lose weight and all that. You know, that's that's one key. Yeah? And that's well, why I like because you, you, you have to make them accountable, mm. which is very difficult for Take many of them. Of course. Yeah. Like they say, extreme ownership. But it's because mm. it's sometimes they've been in, in so in pain for so long, you know, they just they, they, they don't want to deal with it anymore. And that's, that's very serious cases. But you have to try to, again, build a relationship, trust, confidence, and tell them, okay, you can do it. And it's anyway, it's down to you. I'm here to help, but it's down to you. Mm. And, but yeah, you have cases like this, you know, they can't even sit down because they're scared of sitting down and all that. But they've been in pain for so long, they just completely detached from the whole experience. And that's, yeah, that's one of the more serious cases. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you have a deep connections with people and you talked about you wanted to learn more about the human human beings overall mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the psychology, what makes people tick. So tell us about your podcast. It has something to do with people as well. The Sulia Tut of it. 100%. Yeah. How would you describe it's your podcast, people. what it is? Uh, aye, aye, aye. I think we're on to episode 14. The last one was with you, or 15, 16. You see, I don't even know. 18. Or oh, 18. You see, you remember. So you take it more seriously than I do. Because uh, <laughs> I was born in 18th of ah, okay. September. Okay. So the oh, number okay. kind of ah, stood. Okay. Well, thank you. I should have taken before I came. You see, I'm a very bad host. But um, it started, well, actually, we talked about London Real. And that was when I backed in, when I was back in London, actually, that's when it started. So a long time, 20 years or so. And I thought, that sounds good. I had no idea what a podcast was. I had no idea what it was. I was like, oh, that's a good idea. You know, you talk to people and then you're recording and someone can listen to. That was, that's the idea I had of podcast back then. Mm. And then just over the years, it just like went, oh, you know, maybe I should have one. I have no idea, blah, blah, blah. I don't have time, all the excuses. And then fast forward to a few months back, 
but already when we moved to Finland, I thought, okay, maybe that would be good to start something like a foreigner, in, you know, in Finland and talking about what it feels like, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then the COVID hit uh, mid March for us here in Finland. Well, the lockdown kind of, and I thought, okay, maybe now is the time. Buy a mic and off you go. And the question over many years, like, oh, okay, what do I call it? I don't want my name on it. Like, you're not even like Romsky's podcast. Yeah, it's like Frenchy for those who don't speak Finnish. So like, mm. oh, no, I don't want that. And then the whole situation of the COVID being in lockdown reminded me of that play by uh, Sartre, uh, Wiklo, which is in Finnish, which is basically, and then the, 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 the tag phrase is, um, hell is other people. So l'enfer, c'est les autres. So that's why I have this as the... Um, the logo, if you want, for the podcast. And I thought that's really what it is, because people were ending up being at home, stuck, quote-unquote, stuck with their other half and the kids. And that's the only way to have feedback from for how you are through people, if that makes sense. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, that's 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 going to be the name. Yeah, and it's kind of cool that <coughs> Finnish solid love it means closed doors. Mm-hmm. And... And in yeah. French, yeah, yeah. It, it meant something else. Well, it's, it's linguistically, uh, like it's it's a bit more uh, like a higher level of language, if you want, because it was the name of the play, so he couldn't just put like closed doors. It's a bit too generic. Yeah. So we close. It means like really. It's actually a name that they use for movies mm. when there's just two people talking to the camera. That's a we close. So it's like very controlled, and that's dialogue. why I like you know yeah like dialogue a control scene if you want. Okay. It's almost like there's no one else, just these two protagonists. Characters mm. talking to each other, and that's it. So you feel kind of, um, and you have to make out your mind and understand the situation yeah, yeah, yeah. through these two. Yeah, people. well, you have two people, and then that's it. You know, so that's what I wanted. It's just two, two of us. Close mm. the doors, and then that's it. Mm. Just go ahead, because I've always, I think, yeah, I've always been interested in people. Why we are the way we are. Why we do what we do. Mm. You know. And we kind of mirror each other. Yeah, well, in some way, yeah. yeah. Well, they always say you're the sum of the five people who you hang around the most with. I don't know if that's true. Yeah. Maybe two, three, maybe some of us, like me, you just have like two people around you that you hang around <laughs> a lot. No, I'm kidding. In jiu-jitsu, it's plenty. But it's just, yeah, I think I was interested in finding about human nature mm. again, you know. And then it's been debated over the years through many philosophies and philosophers. Sorry, is there actually human nature? Does it actually exist? You what know? do you think? I think, yeah, it does, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. What does human nature mean? Does oh, that's, it? That's, that's, that's a very, very good question. Yeah. I think a lot of the time people, we don't sit down and think about what it mm. means. Mm. Uh, yesterday I was, mm. uh, you know, talking with, with a group, you know, with a bunch of people and we were talking about various things. And one of the topics was who is the best of you know MMA fighters. Oh, of course, yeah, yeah. Always and comes then, up the goat. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and and then you know, or who is the best boxer? Mm-hmm. And you know, everyone was arguing. Then I, mm-hmm. you know, about you know this person, that mm-hmm. person. I was like, you know what? I don't really care who is the the best mm-hmm. boxer because mm-hmm. first of all, it, this information doesn't help me to get mm-hmm. where I want to go. And mm-hmm. then I asked the question: What does what does it mean to be a best boxer? Mm-hmm. What is the definition of a best boxer? Best boxer in his prime? Best boxer in, oh, yeah, you know, no, like, yeah. when it comes to that, they, they never, you know, like, mm. lost a match? Mm-hmm. Or best mm-hmm. boxer by, you know, the outrageousness? Mm-hmm. What are you well, measuring? It, so so yeah, the question yeah. is, yeah. what is the human nature? What mm-hmm. makes mm-hmm. us, mm-hmm. us? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's more or <laughs> less that, yeah. But going back to the best, you know, it's actually easy if you want to stick it to best for boxer the best or the fastest runner. Mm. It's more complicated when you reach um, You can team measure sports. it somehow. Yeah, yeah, of course. Like, who's the best swimmer? Well, he's the one who swims the fastest. Yeah. Well, it's not. Well, yes, it is. He's the best swimmer. He's you the might one. not he's like him. He's the best him, runner. Yeah, he's the one who runs. Unfortunately... Well, he, who's the best boxer? The... Well, let's check Let's check the records. Yeah, but you know, Floyd the technique, Mayweather. the technique, all that. Yeah. Well, how many fights has he lost? That's, that's what you want. That's the best, I, I think. I would think. What's the best, you know, who's the best movie director? Ooh, the one with the most awards? I don't know. It's uh, Because it's, it's hard. It's not like, a, is it a competition? Yeah, but then boxing, you have competition. Jiu-Jitsu, you have competition, you know? Mm. But then again, yeah, he was the best in that year because he won that, those, that many medals. Mm. Like, 
Hussein Bolt is the fastest runner. Well, because he's the one who runs the fastest 100 meters, 200 meters. Is he the best world player in the world? No, he wasn't very good playing football. But, you know, it's that's measurable. So it's easier than, mm. okay, who's the best basketball player, you know? I need to say Michael Jordan, but I know maybe not. Maybe yes, maybe it's hard to say. Mm. Because, again, it's harder to measure. Mm. So in that sense, you know. But like, oh, you know, remember him in his prime. Well, everything changed, you know. Pelé in his prime, yeah, of course. But look, the uh, football post, they were square, not round like they are now. Mm. So that changed and the rules have changed. So it's, 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 you know. You know, like Maradona, he died. So rest in peace, you know. I hope he's in a better place. But I got to say, you know, when he was playing... Mm. LPBD Half over. of the world didn't know how to play football. Yeah, That's yeah, why he was like, yeah, yeah. of course he was good. He's yeah, better than me. I'm mm-hmm, not saying that. Mm-hmm. But a majority of part of the world didn't even know how to play football. Mm-hmm, you know, like mm-hmm. the ta- the basic mm-hmm. tactics. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's the one who came out quite yeah. strongly as well. And then playing as an Argentinian for Italy, mm-hmm. knowing how football is in Italy, it's mm-hmm. it's quite something. And now in Naples, the stadium is now, it's got his name, Maradona. So it's... Wait, was he the best player ever? Hard maybe, to say. Maybe, hard to say. Maybe it's not. hard to say, you know. Yeah. Ask him, you know, like it was before he died, ask him to play. He can't play for nothing, you know. Poor guy. He was like overweight and everything. You know, you know? it was but, a bit yeah, of a he changed, disappointment. He changed something. He changed a lot of football, yeah. It was oh, a yeah. bit of a disappointment when Maradona became uh, the head coach for Argentinian ah, team. Yeah. And mm-hmm. Messi was there and mm-hmm. they mm-hmm. still couldn't, you know, like score the thing. But, you yeah, know, but it's yeah, but it's, but it's different, you know, playing for a team and playing for your country and and mm. all that. But I think for what he brought to football, yeah, thank you very much. And then you can talk about his private life, but you know, I'm asking, yeah. him, I'm asking him to play football. That's it. <laughs> mm, mm. You know. Well, this kind of got <laughs> sidetracked from the whole conversation yeah. of the well, human nature. You know, we, we, yeah, 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 again, yeah, yeah. you see what he did, you know, human nature, best player football, you know. <laughs> Mike Tyson in his prime, if you read his biography, you know, he's just 20 years old. You get that much money in that kind of sport, mm. yeah? You punch people for a living, you knock them down. It 20 years old, what do, what do you think? What do you think is going to happen? And he said it himself, if you listen to the podcast, the first one he did with Joe Rogan, like... Is uh, uh, Joe, um, what's his name? Tamato? There's is his trainer of the day. Uh, he used to, uh, Joe Cus, 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 sorry, Cus, Cus. De Mato. Yeah. yeah, he took him to the hip, hip, hip hypnosis. Yeah? yeah, he did some hypnosis. He was like 14, 15 years old. What do you think is gonna happen with no deload? You know, he was always like, You're the best, you're gonna kill them, you're gonna hurt them, you're gonna kill. Oh, well, and you know, yeah, uh, have that's you heard, the way the mind is. Have you heard Ma- the the Mike is. Tyson's podcasts? He has this uh, His own. boxing. No. Yeah, no. No, some of the, uh, some of the episodes are quite interesting. So he has like big guests there, mm-hmm. but some of the podcasts are really interesting where he talks about his childhood mm-hmm. and he mm-hmm. he cries about his of childhood yeah, yeah. because yeah. he uh, I and I can like I can't relate, mm-hmm. but I can see the humanness in him and mm-hmm. I kind of uh, appreciate him telling about that because we always wondered what it's like to be a Mike yeah, Tyson yeah, yeah, and you yeah, know where yeah, does yeah. he come from and he said yeah. like Cass was not only just his trainer it was one of those people who really believed in him yeah of course you know, like he was he, the first one who looked him in different way yeah and, and he, again he felt like yeah. he was his father almost hmm? yeah, yeah yeah so uh, of course and it's after Cass kind of passed away mm. he uh, he was like in the fourth fifth gear mm without a driver yeah, and the yeah. car is just, yeah, just running keep, keep running yeah exactly. and, and yeah, cast didn't analogy. like tell him like okay this mm. is how you slow down and mm. Mm. and have wisdom mm. because he had uh cast kind of made him read about you know alexander the great mm. and you know mm. different revolutionary mm-hmm. people mm. who have conquered mm. worlds like conquerors yeah, yeah, of course what yeah, made yeah. them like yeah, so bold well, Top people. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. But you can't stay. Mm-hmm. The top is illusion as well. You can't stay there forever. Mm, no. <laughs> and, and, but no. then we... This goes to a different thing. But I wanted to talk about the human mind. And what do you think? I have an idea about human beings that we change all the time. We are not the same pe- person. I'm not the same person. I mean, evolve. 
evolve or denigrate, mm -hmm. whichever you want to yeah. call well, it. Well, evolve in one way or another. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We have a positive, uh, mm -hmm. you know, connotation to yeah. the involvement. But, you know, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. it's also a perspective thing that... Mm -hmm. Some person might say say certain things to be a good you know a good good kind of a in, in e evolution, evolution yeah. and yeah. and other people might say well that's not a good thing that he's mm -hmm. doing he has become more such and just how do you see <laughs> yeah. yeah or you know he has taken yeah. different yeah. habits and yeah. I think yeah. habits yeah. play a role mm -hmm. in yeah. us how we are as a person in like shaping shaping us, shaping the yeah. way we are in the mind and all yeah. do you do you think people change Ooh, big question like overall or how much do they change depends on what uh, era or what time of the <clears throat> They are in the whole evolution of themselves, I would think. But I don't know, it's hard. It's hard to say. Yeah, we change, but in which perspective, in which way? I, I think it's a very individual we adapt, thing. Or do we adapt? Mm. You know, that we are mutant. Yeah. We are. Because we evolve. I mean, we don't stay babies forever. Yeah. No, we are mutant. And, you know, mutant comes from the Latin word, mutans, which is like moving. Changing, changing. You see, mm. like uh, together with the evolution. So yeah, in that way, yeah, of course we change. We get old, which is horrible. Maybe mm. <laughs> that's what my wife and I have been, you know, thinking. Mm. Not us, but obviously our parents. Yeah, they mm. get old. People around us, friends, and all that. So yeah, we change in that way, like physically, yeah, mentally, yeah, as well. But how much? Hard to say. Because we don't count that even when it comes to ourselves how many of us think of us like hey where am i mm. mentally mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. am mm -hmm. i what mm -hmm. are what are my real what are my actual thoughts mm -hmm. it's for me it's more adaptation mm. again maybe i'm bi very biased which it's okay <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we are all biased we, we, ad yeah, things, we right? adapt we adapt to situation we're like now you know Covid stuff, we adapt, you know, maybe for the better, maybe for the worse, unfortunately, but we adapt, yeah. Oh, yeah, we could say we change, yeah. I can really change someone, I don't know. Mm. Some people, <laughs> no, I just think that... It's going deep, people, it's going yeah. deep. Now, I'm just thinking that <laughs> some people, yeah. Yeah, yeah. they want kind of a stability, right? We all want... A comfort? Comfort, a, some kind of a stability. Mm -hmm. And then if my, it's the identity, I think, the, the idea of my, me, myself, who I am. Okay. And if it's tied with another people or person, then if the other person changes, then you feel like, oh, damn, how should I change with oh, that? Right. Or okay. How I should see. I, yeah. don't change, yeah, yeah. be like that. Mm -hmm. You know, <clears throat> don't go there. You make me feel uncomfortable, mm -hmm. man. Mm -hmm. Do you understand mm -hmm. that idea? Yeah, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... I'm not sure where I'm going with this thought, but I'm saying that um, mm. overall human nature and people change. Mm -hmm. And then there are some people who react to that change mm -hmm. quite mm -hmm. uh, dramatically or drastically. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm just reflecting on the idea. Of, you know, I, I met some guys yesterday and we had a chat and there was this one person... Um, I, I'm just reflecting on these thoughts. Mm -hmm. I don't mm -hmm. want to say no, that's anything. Good. No, that's good. Because, you know, yeah, yeah. I was just sitting down and quiet and the other guy was like saying like, I know you think of me in this way, mm -hmm. but I'm actually not. And I was mm -hmm. like, then I looked at him, I, I listened to him and I said, look, man, I'm too busy with my own stuff. I don't give a <laughs> damn about you. No offense, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. all the power to you, but mm -hmm. I don't really care, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. I was like, no, 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 that's not what I meant. I was mm. like, fine, then what are you meaning? Yes, but yeah. anyway, uh, I'm just a, a bit reflecting no, on no, that. That's good. Thought, yeah. that's, thought that's, you know, that do thought. people yeah. change mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. how do people change? Mm -hmm. But let's go back to your story. How did you end up here? Or you were studying? <laughs> I came, and yeah, I came here. I came here. Stuff. I came here because of the weather. That's what I always say when people ask me. For what? The weather is so nice here. You know, especially now, time of the year <laughs> is perfect. <laughs> No, as I as I mentioned when we started, we we actually my my wife and I met in Prague, so that's a long time ago. Maybe some of your listeners were 
couldn't even write their own names usually mm. but that was a long time ago and uh, we decided to go to London finish a bit of studies go to London move there and then as it happened to be in London one year goes like one second so we spent seven years over there and then I had the opportunity to create something in my home country in France which lasted for five six years maybe didn't work out the way I wanted to and then my wife at the time had been away from Finland for 15 years or so mm. so she had not been like living in the country she obviously coming for holidays yeah and um, we had uh, only was about just under two years old when we moved here and um, we decided because it was time uh, I'm that kind of person where if I don't feel comfortable anymore where I am, or if I don't feel like there's anything else for me to get out of, I'll just move away. Mm -hmm. You know, we talk a lot like, you know, um, uh, integration and all that, you know. Mm -hmm. The way I see it myself, if I, can't, if I can't integrate to the country I'm in, well, I'm, I'm not going to bother staying. I'm just going to move somewhere else, you know. Because I've never been really attached to France in one way. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, there's all my families over there, my uncle, my aunt, my brother, his kids, my uh, sister-in-law. But... Uh, I think I'm very egoistic all in that way. Well, yeah, I'm just going to go, you know, hit the road. And whoosh. so it didn't work out anymore. Well, it worked out in London. was, like, OK, that's too much. You know, we're not kids anymore. We need to do something with our lives. Let's move to France, build something. Didn't work out. Let's move away. And then, yeah, with the dog at the time, we still had the dog. So we moved all of us here. The big thing is we had no idea what we were going to do. When you came, when you came, yeah, I didn't come for work, like mm -hmm. as in you know my company transferred me. Uh, same for my my girlfriend at the time. We were not married. Uh, she didn't have much clue apart from the fact that she was Finnish. But again, away for yeah, fifteen years or so, like everything had changed, especially Helsinki because she's from the east, Finland. Yeah. So you know it's a bit oh, a bit different, not that much, but you know like when you watch the TV, sometimes she's like, I have no idea who that is, I have no idea who that is, I have yeah. no idea, you know. <laughs> and because it she evolves probably so much. got like a more of a different kind of an identity than the regular yeah, Finn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, of course, yeah, yeah. That's that's what I've been talking about with us. So you spent too many years in France, you know. Look mm. at you, you react the same way they react. I always say that because I don't consider myself French. Well, I mean, I am, but it sounds very stupid. Yeah. But of course, I can be very French if I want to. But what does that mean? Yeah. But because she, you know, Finnish people, you tell them to do something, they usually do it. Yeah. It's very simple. But she starts to rebel. Mm. And I always laugh sure. about it. Revolution. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but but I, I, and I always say, you know, yeah, you spent too many years in France. What's that about? You know? And then she's like, yeah, maybe. But because she has so many experiences between Prague and London. Mm. You know, London is rough. Yeah. If any job that is, you know, it's like 20 people behind you queuing. Maybe not anymore now, but at the time, it's 20 people behind you queuing to get your job. You know, so you don't do it. You just get out. So in that way. You know, Highly competitive. Oh, yeah. Especially London, London. You know, it's special. London is special. It's like the whole world in one place. It's crazy. I have cousins and a lot, a lot of you know acquaintances uh, in in London. Mm. I like to visit that place mm. as a place, mm. but I would never want to move there. Mm. It's just too much for me. It's special. It will always have a special place in my heart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I love it. You know, I enjoy you know? being there and seeing friends and families, but. You know the way people live. It feels like, it feels like it's a takeaway coffee. If I would like yep. in a describe way. I yeah. London, I, I would yeah, in a way. You know, you drink and then you throw away, yeah. and then you go and take another. Mm -hmm. You know, and mm -hmm. and you're just going with the coffee power. Mm -hmm. Nobody cares about. It's like you know the hamster wheel kind of stuff. You know, like nobody cares about always, being always well. turning and yeah, yeah. I mean it. Yeah, it, 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 you, could, you understand it, what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. It could be this way. I, 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 yeah, I, I understand. It could be this way. And but then the Scandinavia <laughs> life, the Scandinavian lifestyle is yeah. different. Uh, we, are, think, we are more like. Yeah, let's sit down and yeah. go for a walk yeah. in the forest, come back. I think for me, it was really the good stages of me for moving from that place to that place to that place to that place to now here. Getting older, you know, okay, leave me alone. You know, I want to be a bit more, you know, yeah, left alone <laughs> with my own thoughts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we moved here. It was time. It was well better for, for my son, you know, and... Um, Again, I don't miss people, so maybe it sounds bad, but yeah, I, I really don't miss people. Uh, oh, don't you miss your dad? You no, I don't. How, I don't know. It's, but it doesn't it's not mean harsh that for you me. don't care Exactly, for it doesn't them. mean, you know, I don't text them or call them or, yeah. you know, it's not about that. It's just the only really people I miss is my son and my wife when they're not here or when I'm away for business or something like this. 
But I mean, again, it doesn't mean I don't like people. I just, I just don't miss them, which is maybe one way it's good because, you know, I get on with my life. My mom is like, oh, you should call your brother. Well, we call whenever we want, you know, but I don't need to have him on the phone every week to, you know, to talk. I know, you know, you're okay, you're okay. And that's it, you know, mm. but it's, yeah, I don't miss people. I just um, don't. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. It sounds maybe people bad, might but feel, no, no. It's I totally understand. I don't. You. The thing is, I don't feel bad saying this. It's it, because I don't want to say, "Oh my God, yeah, I miss my dad." No, no. I'm I'm very happy. You see, I'm pissed off because they can't come for Christmas. Yeah, yeah. More that than I miss them. It's not because I miss them. It's because I want them to be here for Christmas. That's just tradition. Mm. You know, that's what we've been doing. So of course, I'm happy that they're here. But like Ryan, no, I don't miss them. You know, <laughs> mm, I, I I totally understand that, and I kind of have the similar thoughts. But the problem is, like you said, your mom was saying that hey, you should call your yeah, brother yeah, yeah. and talk to your brother. Mm-hmm. And um, I have the similar kind of a thing. I try to call my mom, you know, at least once a day because it makes her happy. Mm-hmm. But as long as I know that they're doing good, yeah, that's you enough. know, that's fine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And Maybe because I see things in a different lens, I I see life, and obviously these things changes with Mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. Right now, I see the most important thing to do is doing something meaningful that gives you like a state of flow. Mm -hmm. And of course, if I had like a kid, then you know, spending times with the kids Mm -hmm. or that that would be really important because that is a time that you can have later on. Mm -hmm. You know, when the kid grow, they grow and. It's one, gone. It's gone. Yeah, and one mm. time the kid will not really like have that much interest spending time with me. Mm-hmm. And in those days, mm-hmm. I'll go back to my mm-hmm. grind or mm-hmm. whatever. Mm-hmm. So I'm mm-hmm. like maybe forty or mm-hmm. fifty, uh, depending uh, depends on uh, time and place. Mm-hmm. So I do uh, kind of understand your point, but mm-hmm. the problem is, like I said in your podcast, people. They hear things that they want to hear. Of course, yeah, yeah. And if yeah. they don't understand mm-hmm. you, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. then they'll just hear like, oh, he doesn't care for people. Mm-hmm. But that's what I'm trying to explain. If they don't understand me, it's my fault because I don't express it well, you know. And if I tell you 10 times and you still understand, maybe I'll do 15 or 20. But then if you still understand, then there's, well, sorry, there's not much I can do. <laughs> mm. I've tried my best. I know I've, I've tried my best. But yeah, that's just the way. But, you know. It doesn't keep me up at night or anything. It's just, yeah, I just don't miss people. That's it. How come you don't feel yourself to be French? Like, ah, I'm not accusing you. I'm not accusing um, you, but obviously you have your right to. Yeah, I mean, well, first of all, I... Soon, I think. Like, I, don't, I wouldn't say I feel like I'm the most yeah, Bengali yeah, yeah. person yeah, ever. Yeah. It's a part of me. Mm. Mm. I don't really care about mm. it, mm. you know, mm. it is what it is. Mm. I didn't get to choose like, hey, God, I want to be there. Yeah, it's family. Yeah, yeah, Sounds yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. So, um, how could I put it? Because I lived abroad for so long and I've tried to, you know, always respect the law and everything in each country and then, you know, be the good, quote unquote, immigrant and stuff like that, you know. Mm. And just because I wanted to, I just never, um, I never felt that I fit over there in the way people live and all that kind of stuff. And there was a very young age. My mum was crying already when I was 14. I was telling her, I'm going to move to the US, you know, at the time. It's like 1995, you know, I'm like, yeah, rock and roll. You know, I'm <laughs> going to move over there, play basketball, whatever that was, you know, 14, 15. What do you know? And, you know, from then on, I was like, yeah, it was actually a dream of mine. It's always been, well, now it's, it's not a dream anymore because it happened, but to leave abroad. Mm. I don't know why. It's always been like this. I find it fascinating. Always. Cause... I mean, there was never... I don't think I've ever planned to, like, live forever in France. Mm. When I talked with my wife, I said, yeah, maybe we'll retire over there. But, yeah, we've lived over there, etc. Again, as a student, as a, an entrepreneur as well in France, as an employer, and then non-employed as well as I was in France. Mm. And I don't know, it just it didn't feel right. And I'm not saying I'm good for it. No, mm. I'm, again, as I said, if I don't fit in there, well, I'm not going to try even more. I'm just going to go. Mm. And I can blame it on France all I want. That's my fault. It's not the French people's fault. Mm. It's mine. So what do I do? Well, I go. You know, I'm not going to... Oh, look the way they do it. Well, shut up and go. Yeah, if you don't like it, yeah, nobody it. forced you to exactly. stay here. Yeah, exactly. Well, I don't like it in London anymore. But I'm still going to stay for another 20 years. No, no, no. You're going to be miserable. No, just go. Out. That's mm. kind of my really white and black <laughs> mind. Mm. Like, okay, I don't like it. I'm not going to... Okay, go. But that is a good you know? thing to recognize when you don't feel something resonating and actually taking action on that. 
that instead of you know yeah. enduring yeah, yeah. the pain mm, mm. We, if you talk about it mm, you know mm. like you have a shoulder yeah, pain yeah, yeah, yeah. Do something about it. Mm. Go to the physio yeah, yeah. and anyway. you know get it fixed. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do the steps. Mm. Mm. You don't like London. Yeah. You know, go to the yeah. physio. Do you you think... know, work on yourself yeah, 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 and yeah. then action plan yeah, how think... you're gonna re-strengthen it. Do you think France is gonna change for me or London? <laughs> ah, shut up. I mean, you know, one just go. And I was like, okay, let's go. You know, what's well, the that's point? That's a good per- a perspective. You know, and then you know, because I know it's, it's very French, like to uh, usually to uh, stick to what you do and what you know, like your your own comfort zone. That's very very French. But do you think it's you a know, very human being kind it, of a it, thing? It could be, but it depends on where you live, you know. Mm. Like in France, you know, you take them to maybe an hour, stuff like that. But if you're in Paris, but otherwise, you work tend to be close to where you are. And then, you know, the circle is that kind of small. I mean, I'm generalizing, but it's, yeah. it's more or less like that where, you know, comfort zone is kind of where I feel secure and important. I don't know now. I can't say much. I've only lived in over there for seven, six years now. So, mm. but again... I didn't feel comfortable over there anymore. It wasn't working out anymore. Go. That was mm. the option, you know. Do you think, do you have like, do you think Finland is going to be your final destination or do you keep it open? You yeah. know, if I had my crystal ball, I mean, I can see very, very far in the future, you know, mm. I've got that psychic mind. Well, <laughs> not really. But I can, right now, yeah, I like it. It's good. I really like it. And it, I feel comfortable. Yeah. You know, I feel comfortable. And the I'm moment. not saying just to be like, oh, look, no, I feel comfortable. I actually feel comfortable. And I can see my wife is good. My my son is great, and he has the you know the opportunity to go to French Finnish school here in Helsinki. So you know it's even mm. better. Um, I'm happy. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and yeah, if, right now I'm happy. let's say right now you're feeling good, but if you would like find yourself like okay, a itch some way yeah. or another, nothing is ever final. Exactly, yeah, and I think final. people have. Yeah. Me included, we have a problem with that, that nothing is final. I like it. Or I like it. I mean, we can expand on all this even more, but yeah, I like it. Okay. <laughs> like nothing is eternal mm-hmm. and you like that. Mm-hmm. Did you find that, like, did you always have that kind of relationship <laughs> with the eternal funny, thing? because I wanted to talk about that. Um <sighs> Fortunately, unfortunately, I realized when I was very young that I, I was going to die. You know, not oh. like I'm dying now, but like not. You, know. you, you were in a severe like I was, condition. No, no, no. That's the thing. I wasn't into. Uh, fortunately for me, in like a very bad case of cancer and anything like this. Like you know, many kids have, unfortunately. But I still remember the moment I was actually in the shower at my parents' old house, and I was six, seven, eight. I don't know that age, mm. and I realized that myself. Maybe people were dying around me. I'm not sure. Maybe at the time, the great granddad and the neighbor or something. And I realized, yeah, I'm going to die. As in, I'm not going to be here forever. And at the time, I was thinking, my God, I can't, you know, I won't be able to watch my cartoons. And they're going to still play them. And I won't be there to watch. What's, what's that about? That's effed up, you know. Mm. So I thought, something's going on. I'm going to die. And I think from that day, that's what kind of drove me all the way to now. Even at university, there's a, a girl I still stay in contact with. She uh, is very nice. Uh, a very nice friend, she lives in the UK now. And uh, she said, you've always driven in some way or another. Always the, and my dad used to call me the one that prevents you from turning around, which is I was always, okay, what's next? What's next? Like annoying to the point. What's next? At school, what's next? The teacher had once me, you know, turn my thumbs like this. And she goes like, yeah, I managed to do that with him. Like it was exceptional because, okay, what's next? What's next? Now, what's next? What's next? Because for some reason I knew, yeah, maybe tomorrow I won't get up in the morning. And as I get old, and it's not old, it's 40, it's nothing. But so many people around me have died. Uh, mm. Older, same age, younger. There was a guy, I was 13 at school. He committed suicide. He was 13 years old. I think that was the first time I was subject to that. And I'm like, wow. It's not like he got killed with a road rage, you know. It happens as well, unfortunately. But he decided to go. And then, you know, you Pull reach that card. point. You reach that point where that's the, the only and best solution for you. Okay, there's something that went wrong along the line. And I still think about this guy every now and again. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I better do something about it. Mm. And <laughs> I actually mean it. And I always tell, my because my wife is like, okay, easy, you know, the Finnish way. And she's been always like this, you know, very easy kind. I don't like, let's let's go, let's rock and roll. Mm. Let's rock and roll. I might not wake up tomorrow morning. 
And that's why, you know, I train. Oh, you train too much. Well, well, you know, I can train too much. We have two friends who died at the gym, yeah? One, one of them, he had a heart attack. He was not even 30 years old. And the other one, he committed the, you know, the sin. He committed suicide. Mm -hmm. Same, he was around 30. Yeah, I could train hard because they can't train anymore. Oh, he sounds cheesy. No, 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 I can. Mm. <laughs> and I want to train. I want to train until, you know, I, I can't train anymore. But I want to be the one who decides, you know, my cards and what I do with them. Mm. Because it's so... Like this, it's gone. You don't have it anymore. Mm. And whatever reason, and I don't want to have any bloody regrets. That's one thing I'm very... I have many, but I don't want any more. Mm. So one of them is, okay, I've done everything that I wanted to do. That's why I started the podcast as well. Okay, I need to do this. Mm. You know, there was this guy on social media, you know him, Gary Vernerchuk. Yeah. yeah, Gary V. Yeah, give yeah. me, give me, give me three words, give me three words, Gary. And he said, you're going to die. And I remember saying, yeah, I know. Mm. <laughs> I know. And that's why all this stuff about, you know, Joko, discipline equals freedom and all that. Yeah, I know it sounds very, very dark, but you, we are going to die. Ricky Jervis, I mentioned him during the podcast. That's what he said, you know, we're all going to die. We don't have a second shot at it. Some of us have because they had like a heart attack. They had a new heart and all that. That's amazing. That very bad case of cancer they recover from. That's amazing. Mm. My, my mother-in-law, she, she didn't recover from that. Mm. Yeah. It had been going on for my six, seven years. Is, is, oh, that's, that's yeah. been a few years, but you know. Still. Who knows? Ah, I might be next. My, my wife, my son. Let's do something about it. I mean, it's the ultimate truth if if we can predict something hmm. for the future that that is the ultimate truth that is going to happen to yeah. us you can be richer than me you can be stronger you can be faster you can be but you whatever can but you're gonna die escape that yes yeah. you're gonna die we're all gonna die mm. it's you know so that's i think that's been again from that six seven year old moment i'm like yeah it's always been in my mind a lot of people gets kind of depressed for that, that they can't, you know. I know, I know. And I know. they might actually end up like, what's the point, you know? Exactly. I yeah, could that's, just that's, pull yeah, the that's, cord yeah, and I know, that's I know. it. I might know, as well decide the... for myself. Yeah. But for me, it's because I've always been like this. Yeah, no, 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 I need Did to do something. Did you get that results, like when you were going through this process, like, hold on, I can't watch my cartoons <clears> forever. <throat> there will be a time that <clears> cartoons <throat> are there, but <clears> I'm not there. That was the worst. So miss, <laughs> the, the fear of missing out, you know, like they call for social media, the fear of missing out. When you just keep scrolling because you're going to miss the special post which that doesn't makes, really exist that gives you like you know? an anxiety yeah of course yeah, yeah so i think from that day i was like oh my god mm. so i need to know as much as i can and know? social I need media to learn. wasn't like no, around that of time. course not nothing was around it was like 88 89 you know was, pff, you, you remember your friend's telephone number because you didn't have uh, you know you have landlines only mm. you had no idea like the u.s what is this yeah it's over there you know finland pff, no idea what that is you know mm. uh, six seven years old what do you think Mm. So you just, <clears throat> yeah, that, that fear of there's all these things I want to do and I, I won't be able to do them, you know, so I need to do them now. Mm. So I think that's, that I will, that's, what, that's my drive. That's what wakes me up in the morning. It's like, oh God, I'm going to die. Mm. And obviously now there's my son and my wife. So it's, it's all this together. And again, the fact that, okay, I'm privileged because I can do it. And many, many of them can't anymore, mm. you know. And I'm sure they wanted to, to do that extra role at Jiu-Jitsu. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <Or> maybe two, <laughs> maybe three. That guy, one of them, he was competing, you know, a lot. And I always admired him for it. And he signed up last minute sometimes to compete. I said, you Mikko, you're crazy. Why, why do you do that? I don't know. I like it. Well, go, 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 you know. But Because I'm not a competitor. But yeah, so now I roll. I roll for him. That next, next roll is for you. Last roll is for you. You know, I have to. I just have to. So and they were not like my best friends or anything like this, mm. you know. But I have to. It's just... And then I couldn't... I don't want to feel sorry for myself. Looking at, look at you, you piece of crap. You, you know, you just mm. say, no, I don't want to roll. And he can't do it anymore himself, you know. So, yeah, it's... it's that's good you brought it because, yeah, that's, that's my drive. It's been is, my is, drive is, all the time. Is it almost like being grateful towards things that you can do yeah. by taking action in that? Of course, yeah. yeah. Like honoring the mm -hmm. roles mm -hmm. or honoring, you know, waking up and mm -hmm. being motivated or yeah. doing, yeah, yeah. going for exercises. Mm -hmm. You're honoring mm -hmm. the capability that mm -hmm. you have mm -hmm. and you're use, putting it to mm -hmm. use. But it doesn't mean like I'm on 100% of the day of the of time. Of course. You know? I'm no human. Is, yeah. Yeah. I'm human, yeah. So I don't but wake whenever up. you go back yeah, and yeah, you yeah. kind of hey why am I hate doing myself this? yeah yeah it's yeah. like okay do you want to train tomorrow oh no it's okay because I can train the next day no you can't mm. who knows 
Mm. And then work gets in the way or excuses get in the way. So no, no, no. Yeah, go. Yes, I'll go. Mm. Yeah, I'll go to train. That's why sometimes I see many things like procrastination is good for you. And it's hard for me to relate. It's hard for me to do nothing. <laughs> you know, uh, this week, like literally yes. two days ago, like three days ago, every time I went to sleep, I couldn't. Okay. Because I knew there are things that I need to figure out. So about the podcast, mm -hmm. like some guests. Okay, you don't have guests after Johan. You mm -hmm. don't have a guest. Mm -hmm. Who's going to come? What it's, are you going to do? It's okay. It's okay that you don't have a guest. But it's okay. It's not okay to not do something about it. You know? Exactly. So don't worry too much. Mm -hmm. You'll find one. But yeah, it's okay. Like, it happens. But, but I was like, hey, I'm going to sort it out tomorrow, mm -hmm. you know, after mm -hmm. work. Yeah. And uh, can you invite a guest when you're sleeping? No. Or no, when you're in your bed? No. So just sleep. Like I was tired. <laughs> I slept. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I keep waking up. Okay. Yeah. Like yeah, I yeah. couldn't. Yeah, yeah. And it yeah. was like four o'clock or five o'clock mm -hmm. in the morning. Then I was like, you know what? There's no point sleeping like this. Mm -hmm. I'm not sleeping. Mm -hmm. My body is not actually recovering. Mm -hmm. So I'm better of doing something mm -hmm. more productive mm -hmm. so I can get tomorrow like mm -hmm. a better sleep. Mm -hmm. So I started to write things down that was bothering me. I started to write things down that I want to do before I die. You know, mm -hmm. things that I want to take care of before I die. Uh, you know, I, I started to think about, you know, what are the mm -hmm. most important things to me? And you might, or we might say things that, okay, family and, you know, staying in contact with family and mm -hmm. yada, yada, yada. But in reality, my action doesn't show that I'm being, mm -hmm. you know, connected mm -hmm. with my family, mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. example. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, then I have to do something about it. Maybe this is keeping me up. Mm -hmm. And then there were some, you know, technical issues like, hey, how do I fix my, uh, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, the yeah, cameras yeah. and mm -hmm. how do I make the sound quality better? Mm -hmm. Okay, now I have, you know, saved some money. What to buy next? Because mm -hmm. there are so much information and you can't... Yeah, yeah. Okay, is this good decision or that? So mm -hmm. I really appreciate the advice you gave me that, okay, roll with this camera and put mm -hmm. it on a sale. And mm -hmm. then once so you can upgrade, sell, yeah, yeah, then mm -hmm. upgrade it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, that kind of makes sense. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's mm -hmm. a very obvious thing, but sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, it's very hard to take the ideas in. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Yeah. So, so c coming from that point that we're going to die and I can't sleep if I don't do things, if I have... You know. Yeah. No, I mean, yeah, yeah. But as I say, you don't have to be hundred percent on all the time. You just have to organize yourself. Mm. Again, uh, okay. One, one second gone. You won't get it back. One second gone. You won't get it back. Yeah. Again, again. But one those. <laughs> but if you can like predict them somehow. Yeah, oh, just or plan. You know, plan. And it doesn't marathon. have to be like super plan. You know, mm. like. A for some people it doesn't work, for some people it works, you know, mm. but the more you plan, the more time then you have for the unknown or unforeseenable stuff that can happen, like whether it be a punctured tire or anything like this, or yeah, you have to, you know, change it so it takes extra time. But I think the more organized you are, then the easier it is to actually have that extra thing going on. But again, I'm not, you know, you do what you want, but mm. when I see uh, procrastination is good for you, and I mean, I get it, but oh. if you want, if it works for you, perfect. For me, I hate myself even more, you know. So. I do as well. And because, then I will again, do more destructive things. Mm -hmm. I will open the ice cream oh, jar of course. and you yes. know yes. and watch uh, something but nonsense. In, yeah, but the other way is that's that's what makes us human as well, you know? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Like yeah. I do have my moment, but rather than having the whole ask ice cream jar in mm. one go mm. i might have two spoonfuls yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and feel satisfied mm. and continue it mm. and i might have it every day mm. but i'll have mm. like a couple spoon yeah, full yeah. of yeah, instead yeah. of you know indulging the whole thing. Think, yeah. yeah and i think it comes with the time and realization and one of the places where i get a lot of my realizations mm -hmm. are from my workouts okay and do yeah. you can that's, you relate to that yeah. when you're doing like a bjj <sighs> When did you start, by the uh, yeah. way? Jiu-Jitsu. Oh, long story. I actually started when I was still in London. I did 10 months of training over there. And uh, when we moved to France, I completely stopped. Well, I had a few sessions, but I completely stopped. And I actually started with Judo when I was at university in France. So that's even uh, earlier than that. And then moved to London. And then I was doing personal training, all kinds of gym things. Mm -hmm. and, 
And then I think maybe it was the Olympic Games or the World Judo Championship, something like that. And I was like, oh, yeah, I could try that again, you know. That's what I did when For I was at university. No, 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 no. Just training judo. Oh, okay. Know? So that is... And then, and then because, uh, oh, yeah, I remember I was a uh, yellow belt. That's the second belt you get in judo So from, from university. And I liked it. It was fun. I liked the throws. I liked all that. And then I tried to look for a place. I ended up being in London in the oldest, actually, judo place in Europe. That was the first time that Jigoro Kano sent one of his students in Europe and opened one there. Mm. And then they ended up having Brazilian jiu-jitsu over there as well. Mm. <clears throat> so hold on, that's 2006 or five, and uh, I go there. I pay my my fee, and she goes, "Well, actually, there's no judo today. They have a meeting, but you know, Brazilian jiu jitsu is starting in ten minutes. Do you want to go?" Mm. And I'm like, "Well, I'm here." And I'm like, "Brazilian jiu jitsu." Like, yeah, Did okay. you have any kind of idea? Mm, what well, it was? one guy again, one guy mentioned it when I was in university. Oh, you know the crazy brothers and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, like an older dude. And I was like, oh, yeah. he's getting crazy. What is he talking about? Because yeah. we did Japanese Jiu-Jitsu, which is part of the judo stuff, which is like self-defense and all that. And then I was like, well, yeah, but I've got this for Jews. I mean, is that the same equipment? Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Don't worry. It's a beginner's class. And then I think from that day, I just got hooked straight away. Mm. Straight away. What, so the Japanese Jiu-Jitsu... Mm-hmm. How does that? Well, the way I was taught, it was together with judo. So it's like someone throws a punch, you block it, you counter, and you throw them. So that's yeah. jiu-jitsu. But you can have as well jiu-jitsu competitions that are a bit more evolved than that. But I'm not an expert. So for yeah, Japanese so... jiu-jitsu, you can ask someone else. But yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah something yeah, like that. Did... But it's all together. It's all judo, jiu-jitsu, whatever you want to call it. Mm. We differentiate it because Brazilian jiu-jitsu came supposedly from Brazil. But... There's a book that's got that's released now, Opening the Guard, by Robert Drysdale, a very, very well-known uh, jiu-jitsu instructor. Mm. He's both Brazilian-American, uh, and he re- he's going to release a, a, f- a movie about it, mm. Breaking the Guard, Opening the Guard, or Close Guard, something like that. Close mm. Guard, yes, the movie. We, it goes deep into the history of jiu-jitsu and how it started and all that, so it's yeah. very good. But then from that day, I was like, okay, jiu-jitsu, and I signed up for both, jiu-jitsu and judo. So that was in London, 10 months of this, and then we decided to move to uh, France. And I was looking, and it just bear in mind that at the time, I think YouTube was like one year old. Mm. Yeah, that's that old, so no idea how to upload a video or anything like this. So it's not like now we have one million techniques of jiu-jitsu every day, more or less, you know, mm. new ones. So it was like all that. So I did a few sessions though in France and then we moved to here and the first thing I asked my, my wife, said, okay, where's the closest jiu-jitsu gym? <laughs> mm, mm. And it ended up being very close to where we live now. So I just from that day, I signed up, I think uh, in September of this uh, year, we moved in July, I signed up in September, October, and then that's where I work as well. Mm. <laughs> so like jiu-jitsu changed my life. You can hear it many times. I don't know if it changed my life, but it gave me something. Mm. He gave me this, jiu-jitsu, uh, connections, friends, training partners, and my work, because I work in the gym. Mm. And I just got sucked into it. And for me, it's, 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 it's the, the, I don't know, pinnacle of everything for me. Life, yeah. uh, relationship, everything. I just see through a like, jiu-jitsu lifestyle and blah, blah. Not really, but just the whole, the whole concepts. I'm a very conceptual person where... I need concepts to function. You know? mm. Like jujitsu, you can show me the technique, I can watch it, and I have no idea what you're telling me. You have mm. to tell me why you do this. Yeah. Why? So then I can apply it myself in other situations. So it has like a grander plan. So you well, have, a bit, yeah. a bit more detached a picture mm. of it. Yeah. Rather than okay, you grab here, you turn here, you do this. Oh, you lost me at the. You grab here the first <laughs> step. So don't, don't bother. It's okay. Do it to me. Ah, okay, that's the way it feels. All right. Okay, but why? Mm. And my, I'm glad my auntie, my sensei, I call him sensei, shout out to him. He knows it. I don't know if he knows that he knows it, but he knows it. Every time, if he has time, he goes, okay, uh, uh, let me explain. <laughs> Thank you. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm a bit, no, I'm not very smart. So I need someone to actually break it down. And at school was the same, you know. And teacher used to what be What do you mean by break why. it down? Is it step Breaking by down step? why. No, uh, no, break it down why. why. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So why So we start really here. Yeah, yeah. But you. how do you end up here? <laughs> mm. And Why? Why do you do this? Mm. Well, because if you don't, then that does... Ah, okay, get it. Push the leg through. No idea what you're asking me to do. Okay. If you do this, that's what's going to happen. So you mean if I do this with this or that or that, that's going to happen? Yes. Put him, put him off balance. Ah, there you go. That's what you should say. Don't tell me push the leg and this and that because then he's going to fall. Push him off balance. Ah, how do I do that? Well, it depends on who you have. Let's try. Doesn't work. Doesn't work. Doesn't... Ah, now it worked. It worked with him. 
With her, it doesn't work because the legs are shorter. Okay, let's see. Oh, maybe I'll use my hands then or my elbows. Oh, now it works. So that's the way for me. So conceptual more. Obviously, you need the techniques to show, but conceptual jujitsu, yeah. What about in other spheres of life? Yeah, Are everything. you like that? Yeah, yeah of course. Like you my need work. That. Okay. My work. Uh, whenever my I everything. teach, mm -hmm. uh, it comes to my mind is I teach the way you like to be taught. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not saying that I'm a great teacher, but you know, mm -hmm. for example, my younger <coughs> sister is having some pro troubles with mathematics. Okay. Right? And she comes to me and obviously she's just thinking, how can I... <laughs> get done with my homeworks mm -hmm. and move on with my life. Mm -hmm. And I'm, you know, showing her, okay, you need to know why you are calculating these things. Mm -hmm. What are we trying to get here? That's the point. If that doesn't make sense mm -hmm. to you, mm -hmm. then why do you care? Mm -hmm. What are you doing? No, that's, that's the why. That's exactly the why. And then, then I try to <clears throat> explain that, okay, we are calculating, but this is the ratio. And it's mm -hmm. very... Mm -hmm. Hard to explain what is a ratio. Mm -hmm. Imagine mm -hmm. you're a human being, mm -hmm. you never understood that there is a, such a thing called ratio. Yeah, it's true. really hard That's to concept. explain hard. Yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. You know. But then, yeah, I mean, again, <laughs> going back to teaching, it's just we just learn different ways. Different people learn different ways. We all have the same three combinations, but otherwise we learn kind of different ways. Mm. Again, if you tell me, if you show me, well, not really, you have to do it to me. A more mm. kinesthetic kind of approach. Mm. We're all visual, auditive, and then kinesthetic, but some of us are more one or the other. Mm. I know some guys, you show them one million techniques, and that's what they want, and they're very good with that. Mm. But does that make them martial artists? As in, you can learn any music with a guitar, but can you create music? Mm. That's what I mean. It's two different things. Mm. You, know? you can do covers of everyone. Can you write your own songs? Mm. Maybe you can. That's perfect. Maybe you can. Well, I mean, I no. can't even do covers, so you, know, <laughs> you lost <laughs> again. Me there. <laughs> again, one more thing. It's not criticized. It's just what do you want? You know, what do you want? Yeah. I don't compete. I mean, I competed three times, and it's not really. It's very far on my list of why I I, I do jujitsu. Mm. Are you scared of losing? No, I don't even care if I win. Mm. I don't care. I really, I really, honestly don't care. I like to find out why. Yeah. Why does it work with her? And what doesn't work with him? Mm. Why am I bad here? Why am I good? Because the thing is, teaching jujitsu, it's, it, I don't know how sensei does it, auntie, and then all the other teachers as well. It's hard. Mm. Unless you want to do teaching. Bad, yeah. You do because it's so, you, you've probably heard like it's the human chess of sports. Yeah? yeah. You know, in chess, you have the time. You have the time, a click, click. You have whatever, 90 minutes or whatever. Mm. Jujitsu, no, you don't have the time. It's problem solving at its finest. It's right here, right now. If you don't solve it, you get even more trouble and then you get choked, arm bar, you tap or you pass out. So that's, it's so dynamic. Mm. You see, we don't have much time to reflect. There is you can a plan low, ahead. There is a lot of variables that you need to it's take too into many variables. Yeah. How do you feel on that day? And what did all, you eat? It's almost like you know? also swimming, swimming oh, and it's, playing it's, chess it's, at the same time. So you're like... It's hard. So that's, yeah. of course, it's very physical. You get, you know, you pain everywhere and then you have everything, even the hair hurts. But for me, it's more uh, mental. It's a mental game. Yeah. For me, it's a mental game. I mean, again, I'm... I'm, I'm in mental my, game, in multiple hurts, but... ways that... I, I mean, I have grappled mm -hmm. and I'm not good mm -hmm. with that. Mm -hmm. But no, I... I'm not good either. <laughs> I love grappling mm -hmm. because it's such a hard thing to do. Mm -hmm. And it's also like outsmarting someone mm -hmm. and being smart about your own energies yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. When to use mm -hmm. more strength and mm -hmm. when not when to give up mm -hmm. oops i gave it here yeah, but yeah. you you know you keep something yeah. else you mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. and okay i'm swinging right now but how can i when i'm mm -hmm. going down mm -hmm. how can i do some damage mm -hmm. so i can get mm -hmm. into the yeah, better position yeah. and uh for example i do watch some of the jujitsu you know like when i used to grapple and the gyms mm -hmm. were open i used to like uh watch some youtube videos yeah yeah. And use it on my cousin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. it was yeah. really like, I like the way Eddie Bravo from the 10th Planet, <laughs> how he like, you know, Edgy the, Brav. Edgy Brav. you know, yeah. how he Edgy. explained things. Edgy. And I was like, yeah. hey, I yeah. do this move yeah. so that the, my opponent yeah. thinks that I'm running certain moves, yeah. but I'm actually doing something else in behind. Yeah. But I you see like, how wow. he created his whole system. He gave names. Why? Because that's the way you remember. That's mm. the way you remember the technique. 
Mm. Why do you think they remember like deck of cards? Because they have names, they have stories for the deck of cards. They don't remember it's the king, the queen, or it's, they associate stuff with that. So if you associate the technique with a word and you call it out, uh, honey hole, and they know what it is. Mm. Or whatever, uh, uh, kiss of the dragon, and they know what it is. It's a move, but he created his own system around this. Mm. And that was a very good way to teach people. So because the rubber again, guard is really interesting. That Well, I... that's, you know, go in it. I mean... Mm. Again, whatever God, just just think about what's going on, mm. you know. But I have an idea in my mind mm. when you say rubber guard. Yeah, like, okay, of course. Yeah yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what it is. Boom, straight away. You see, you don't have to think. It's like, yeah, rubber guard. You do this, that, whatever, you know. Mm. Kiss of the dragon. All these moves, you know. Uh, you had one like let the dogs lie or whatever, you know, something. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> so it's just, just creep the dog in no, the it, oven. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's something like this. But then at least all the students, they remember because it standardized, it systematized the whole system, the yeah. whole stuff. Yeah. And it's also, so if you go, if you go to China, if you go to US, if you come here in Finland, they all have the same name for the same move. So they can scream the names. They know. Mm. They know. And that's, that was very brilliant. Very smart guy, you know. Very smart guy. Yeah, he is. Um, I think about uh, one of the stuff we were talking before we started to the podcasting is your uh, your other ear. Oh, yeah, it's nothing. The prettier uh, ear is uh, here. Like here. <laughs> Co- Color yeah. ear. So yeah, cauli- um, cauliflower ear. Cauliflower yeah, it's not ear. not much. I mean, many people. Oh, you know, it's street cred and all that, and you know, it's a badge of honor. Which yeah, which I get for me is because I've got a very bad defense on that side, so that shouldn't happen. But yeah, I mean, I don't even pay attention. You know, it's like if you have tattoos, I have tattoos, and yeah, they're just there. You know, you forget about it. Mm. Uh, I know my mom doesn't forget about the ear, and she always wonders. Like I said, okay, is these it gonna are come not back? the ears that I yeah, gave. Yeah, oh, I made you. I made you so perfect. I'm like, yeah, not really. Look at that. So I'm gonna sue her for that ear because it should have stayed like the the left one. But that's yeah. That's some people have them. Some people don't. In France, it's common for rugby players to have cauliflower ears. Yeah. Usually, if I go to France now, they all think I play rugby because again, jujitsu is what is known, but not as much as rugby. For and example. I think it's getting more popular mm, all over of course, the year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, well, oh yeah, 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 yeah slowly. Yeah. But mm. I associate that with with uh jiu-jitsu okay. or, or yeah, yeah. mat rolling or like wrestling. A grappling or wrestling yeah, yeah. in the u.s is wrestlers they have loads of these you know if you, you know randy couture yeah yeah so you know he, he, i mean one of them is not even an ear anymore there's not, nothing else left almost it's just mm-hmm. got the hole <laughs> so uh, what about the like protections you don't oh, the like gear. them yeah well i wore like ears. i said yeah. like a couple of weeks because it was just very painful and tender but no, not okay. anymore if you want to go ahead, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. But I, um, no, I don't like it. I mean, it's not like you can try the co- uh, the the ear uh, cauliflower ear. Cauliflower ear. You can yeah. try yeah, it. Yeah. Like, hey, let me see if yeah, I yeah, like no. that. Yeah, yeah, no, oh, no. it goes with my well, looks. No, as I well, said, as I said, I could have it removed, but it has to be like surgery. Shit. Take yeah. it off. Oh, I don't care. Yeah, you know. Uh, I find it fascinating. I, I personally care. really. Yeah, I, I find it like <laughs> it tells a something yeah, about the person yeah, yeah, right yeah, i see and yeah, i associate yeah, yeah. jiu-jitsu with that or some, wrestling or yeah i know some people make a g- big deal i think in the jiu-jitsu committee we just laugh at it because that's just what happens yeah. and as i said again for me it's because my defense is very bad on my right side mm. so they go and crush that ear with a whatever elbow or shoulder or hand so mm. but that's you know yeah i don't even pay attention that doesn't hurt so you know <laughs> mm. so does it you don't like with time Never. it it hurts less and no, less not even yeah some people you know they can have even more mm. you know but for me right now no, it hasn't bothered me in a, yeah four or five years since it dried up like this yeah yeah it's just hard but that's okay <laughs> maybe i'll have the left one soon i don't know <laughs> yeah, yeah hopefully yeah. i'm getting better so i'm uh yeah i can protect better mm, <laughs> and i don't mm. get that yeah i, no, I don't mind hmm um, my personal, since we were talking about jiu-jitsu, my mm-hmm. personal um, approach or relationship with jiu-jitsu is that uh, overall with martial arts, I have a cousin of mine. He's going to come soon uh, to the to my place and we're going to hit the gym. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was a um, big fan of, uh, un- uh, what, what's this, the spider? Anderson Silva. Anderson Silva, yeah. Mm-hmm. And he was uh, watching UFC since, you know... It wasn't so cool as okay. or popular as it's now. now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then um, you know he was always watching that, minding his own business. I don't watch any sports. I don't really mm-hmm. care about any sports. I, I find it um, 
especially like team sports. Oh, Arsenal okay. versus this one yeah. and that one. Well, yeah, that's gonna happen to next year as mm. well. Mm. And mm. you see, you guys seems to be so excited about mm. that. Mm. But when it comes to like, okay, Mike Tyson versus someone or mm. UFC, mm. you know, that person will never ever come back, or yeah, maybe yeah. will yeah. come back. Yeah, so yeah, that's there is a slightly mean. difference there. Yeah, but hey, you are, you, you know, each to their own. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And um, I was like interested, what is the best way of fighting? you know when it comes to self defense and and mm. what not mm. then uh, we Big came question. to the conclusion that mm. if it's standing up mm. they might be thai boxing but mm. depending on who is fighting as well mm. you know how mm. but context what's the yeah, context the, the context right is but it a closer bar is it outside you know if, uh, is yeah so that, do they have a knife do they have a gun do they have anything like this exactly and we started doing uh, thai boxing mm -hmm. for uh, for a month mm -hmm. Before that, I did go to the gym like quite regularly. Mm -hmm. uh, and my philosophy on working out is like, hey, I'm not going to compete on, you know, the stage with, yeah, yeah. you know, having yeah, underwears and yeah, whatnot. Yeah. I mean, you know, power <laughs> to these people as well. It's not just my thing. Mm -hmm. So there is no point for me to put enough um, attention you know, train mm. like they train because yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's not going to benefit me because I, I just want to yeah. be like yeah. healthy person. Yeah. Health is yeah. the most important for me. Yeah. So I should prioritize that. Yeah. And then it's like, how can I do the least to get the most? So 2080 yeah, yeah. law, yeah, yeah. how can yeah. I like do just the things that I need to do? So I hit my body in a three different yeah, yeah. ways. So I have my cardios and, you know, I do like shoulders and uh, chest. Jiu-jitsu, that's the answer. Uh, I know, I know. I'm going to come to <laughs> no, that. No, exactly. No. You can say CrossFit, you know, anything. Yeah, but CrossFit, people like, they don't, like, of course, they look phenomenal. I like their, you know, the body. No, hold on, hold on. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, yeah, but wait. They, they destroy themselves. No, right? no, no. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Because CrossFit, you only see the top athletes. Oh. Of course. How many are now top athletes? What what makes? How much do they make of the actually CrossFit practitioners top athletes? No point one percent. That's like the you know, it's crazy. The, listen, it's like the sixty best in the world. Yeah. Mm. How many people do you think are practicing CrossFit in the world? One thousand, one million, more than that, much more than that. Mm. So what you see CrossFit games and all that, the way they ripped, it's not many of them. Mm. It's just a few. It's not the regular gym goer like you would go three, mm. four, five times a week even. Mm. So that's what you have to remember, you know. Yeah, you, you can like... see. I'm gonna show you Mike Tyson in his prime, and you're gonna think every boxer look like this. No way, mm. no mm. way. And then I mean, even more now because you have the weight category and all that. But mm. remember the CrossFit like genre, everything. It's it's not just these people who compete for the best to be the best in the world. Of course, they're going to look like ripped to the bone and like super strong, even I mean, they look like the modern superheroes. Yeah, but even again, the girls, it's not... they look like yeah, no, more manly I than know. I do. They, they, <laughs> look, they, look, well, they look the part because that's the job of lifting heavy, pushing to your limit, being and like everything, endurance, all of it, all the systems. Exploding yeah? in yeah, multiple Yeah, of course, that's, that's the job. Ways. But again, they are the top people in the world. Of course, they're, you know, they're not going to look like me. I'm not going to go very far. Mm. But remember, they're not your regular gym CrossFit goers, you know. Mm. That's what, that's, that's, again, they, they use this as a selling point, I think. But then I honestly, personally, don't know many, like close to the people I have doing CrossFit who look like this. Like one out of 5,000, maybe. Yeah, but they still do look like so, a part of the reason you work out is to, you know... Yeah, but you good. have to remember that it's just the top people. You will never reach that level. Mm, mm. You will never reach oh, that level. Sorry to story. say, yeah. Sorry uh, to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah go mean, ahead. Yeah, sorry, I sorry. Have a very, I just uh, had to make the point because they get a lot of bad press CrossFit people. Of course. And, I mean, again, I, I respect a lot. I always tell the, the ones who come, like, I will never do what you do. It's too hard for me. <laughs> I'm too lazy to do all that. And yeah. they laugh and I'm like, yeah, no way. And they tell me I would never do jiu-jitsu because it just when I do my looks so hard. You know? When I do my cardio days, I actually go through the things that the CrossFitters do. Okay. Because I find it is like the hardest cardio you can do is a CrossFit kind of a cardio, the way they train. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, I'm not an one expert, way. but this one is way. my uh, analysis of that. Mm -hmm. So I was like thinking like, you know what? I want to do more functional. Mm -hmm. I want to stay healthy. For mm -hmm. me, you know, even if I go to the gym, my point is not to lift the heaviest. My point is to stay healthiest, mm -hmm. you know, and, and yeah, yeah. go as many days as I can to the mm -hmm. gym. But if I like broke myself in my 
fifth day mm-hmm. because of my ego yeah, yeah. what's the point mm-hmm. you know I don't, I don't get to my goals which yeah, is yeah, to stay course, healthy yeah. and yeah. functional mm-hmm. so I started to we started the Thai boxing so we went for Thai boxing you know I'll get course it okay beginners course and it was super hard because I wasn't trained cardio wise the okay. same way yeah. you know I was like wow of I'm course. so out of shape mm-hmm. and you know and I saw the results and you know how it was uh, it was okay, but I didn't like the sparring because it was um, it was too much. I don't like to get hit in the in the head. I don't yeah. like the yeah, yeah. you know long term <laughs> yeah, yeah. you I know understand. effects. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and then um, you know we did some grappling with my cousin, so I, we would like spar every now and then. He he went for boxing afterwards. Okay, but we do like kickboxing kind of more more than the Thai boxing because Thai yeah. boxing is super brutal. You're giving knees and elbows, you know. Yeah, uh, the art of eight limbs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, which is very yeah. effective mm-hmm. to hurt someone, mm-hmm. but you don't want to do that in a practice. So. Then I was like, okay, so if I have to take f- from the wrestling kind of or grappling kind of uh, arts, if mm-hmm. I have to like choose one of them, I would take jujitsu because I got into the wrestling. I don't like what they're mm-hmm. wearing. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. It's a style. I'm uh, just, I'm I don't mind. Joking. It's funny. I mean, yeah. it's their own. Yeah, yeah. But jujitsu, the gi thing, plus it has like a level up system. So mm-hmm. you try to, you know, work oh, on yeah. the hierarchy. You're mm-hmm. working yourself. And also the guard system that, you know, in BJJ. Mm-hmm. And okay, you're on your back. Are you going to give up? Mm-hmm. Or, you know, mm-hmm. you're going to mm-hmm. continuously, like, look for a better position for mm-hmm. yourself. Mm-hmm. And I think it comes to the life as well that, okay, you're going to be slap, uh, you know, in a bad position in life. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. you have to work yourself out from that and Find a solution. Yeah. yeah. Of course. So I always, like, um, it's been in my bucket list and... Since last time when we talked, mm-hmm. you talked about because you know my my work is mainly on the evening, so mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I was like, hey, I uh, I won't be able to do it. And then you opened my eyes and said, hey, there are mm-hmm. sessions in the morning. Of I'm sure even around here, you know. You yeah, and seen. I was like, wow, mm-hmm. maybe oh, I yeah. should indulge. I have too many hobbies or interests of things. Well, you know, you know it's not a bad thing. Just pick one. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Yeah, that's yeah, but. Yeah, jujitsu is is a power. It's magic, whatever. But then I'm very biased. That's what I do. I always recommend people to try. If you don't like it, that's fine. Don't when like did you it, get yeah. your brown belt? But... Uh, no, I'm not brown. I'm purple. Purple. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry. Uh, that's all right. A year and a half ago, I think it was. Yeah. A year yeah. and a half ago. And then the brand will come when it will come. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Two years, three years, I don't care. Do you fantasize I it or care. you don't care? I don't care. You just love uh, the art. Of I it. care in one way because we have a deal with my wife is. Whenever I get a new belt, I get a new gi. <laughs> oh, nice. So, you know, that I only care about that. Obviously, it's nice and stuff. But honestly, I don't know, two years, three years. The worst thing that could happen to me is if, well, for some healthy re- health reason, I couldn't train anymore. Or if my sensei would say, okay, you're not allowed to train here anymore. Mm. If you tell me you will never get your black belt, I don't care. I'm not going to stop. That's mm. not what's going to stop me. What's going to stop me for you to tell me you need to stop because we don't want you here anymore. You know? I always say, if you train constantly, well, recover, blah, 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 the belts will come. And I don't compete, so I don't need the belt to compete at that, you know, competition. I need to be a brand belt, I need to be a purple, I need to be a white, or whatever. Mm. You know. You just... did, I care about, did I care about getting them? Blue? Purple? Yeah, I mean, the blue, I kind of, we had the test at the time, so yeah, I knew it was coming. The purple, I had no idea it was coming. And then, the, again, the brand will come, I don't know, two, three, four, I don't know, I would, what Honestly, is, um, what kind of test do you guys have? Well, the not anymore. Test? They okay. used to be belt tests. It depends on the school. Like if you go very official, they want to test. Like you need to know that many techniques. But then the sen- then auntie, I call him sensei. That's not the real name, but be- mm. you know, it comes from Cobra Kai. But <clears throat> it's actually one of our guys who's not in the gym anymore. That's what he used to call him. So that just stuck. Cobra Kai but, is yeah, never dies. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, he uh, he said, you know, there's, I understand the way, but there's no point. I could take you now, Mutaki, and then we're going to train three weeks, full on. And I'm going to teach you the 40 techniques or 35 that you need to be a, a blue belt. Okay? Mm. We're going to go very hard on those techniques only. And in three weeks, you go to the test and then you pass. Why? Because you've just learned those techniques. Are you a blue belt? No. Mm. No. Because it's jujitsu. Mm. it's more than it's <laughs> if I take maturity. you after those three weeks 
okay, now you go spa, even light stuff, you'll be completely lost. Mm. Because it's not a set thing. It's constantly moving. It's constantly moving. Mm. So I understand the point of the test to see if you can, but then I think they're good enough, everyone, instructors, to know, okay, I think he's ready. I think she's ready. Mm. You see, she knows now what to do in that case. She's helping around. Mm. She's helping lower belts. She deserves it. Mm. And she's going to get the next belt, you know. Again, mm. I don't know. I'm not a sensei, but that's the way I see. Mm. And the belt will come. I don't care. Yeah, I the sensei has like a <coughs> list of well, criteria. We should call them something else. It's not people will believe they call them senses, but yeah, yeah, uh, instructors. instructors yeah, yeah. Have, um, but they, they, you know, they have their own agenda. They know, okay, you mm. know, they roll with you. They train with you. They see you around. They see you if you come to train. They see you if you compete as well. Mm. Then we have guys who are purple belt. They are destroyers. Mm. They're like brown black belt level, but mm. like they won't get it now because they want to compete more. Mm. You know, and they're still young. They're like half my age. So, mm. you know, they destroy me and that's just the way, you know, am I going to stop? No. Mm. Are they going to stop? No. So why would I stop? Mm. Mm. <laughs> but the belt will come one way or another. I don't, but so honestly, you, you, you feel joy of getting a belt because you get to get a new training, a new gi, clothes, yeah, a clothes, new, new training. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, uh, you must feel some kind of satisfaction. Of course, yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, if he gives it to me, like, I don't know, next year, I'm not going to say, no, 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 I don't deserve it. Because you're not, you're not the one who, anyway, mm. who says yes or no. You, know, you just... It's not yes, up the to you exactly, in that sense exactly. when it In comes. one way, it's up to you because you need to show up. But yeah. you're not going to say, oh, yeah, hey, sensei, I think I'm ready, you know? No, 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 no. That's mm. not the way it works. Mm. Shut up and train. Show mm. up and train. Mm. You no know, sweat and cry and blood everywhere. You know, mm. help, help your training partners you know help to push the class like we say you know help to you know maybe you can do the warm-up today and all that mm. yeah but of course it feels great because you recognized mm. but it's better when for me it's better when he says well done you know you do a move or you do something he watches you to oh well done or that or the other or the training partners that's your best feedback mm. good job like oh wow this time you got me mm. and then i tell them okay you see this time i was really bad really crap good job mm. that's the best way how can one, you know, train for, for grappling overall? What do you think is the best exercises? Or, you know, if someone wants to be, you know, I'm thinking myself that I want to go to Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, what kind of a tra training would help me to, you know, mm -hmm. kind of, is it flexibility? I, I would yeah, think yeah. about flexibility. That's a very good question. It's very simple to answer. Mm. Uh -huh. Anyway, okay. we have the sound. Okay. Show up to the Perus Corsi. That's it. Okay. That's all you need. You don't need any prerequisite for Jiu-Jitsu. Mm. That's nonsense. You don't need prerequisite for anything. Mm. Just go. Show up. You think, oh, I'm going to get more flexible. I'm going to get more uh, I don't know, stronger. I'm going to get more endurance, more stamina. And then I'll start. You will never start. Just be honest. You will never start. Just go. Show up. Mm. Show up. And then see what you need to work on. I, I can't do that move. Well, maybe you need to try to, you know, move that way. And then, I mean, again, we can go on forever, but show up. Yeah, mm -hmm. show up. The thing is with Jiu-Jitsu, you have to be able to perform the move so that you can do the movement for the technique. Mm. If you can't, like, turn around on your head and stuff like that, well, practice this move mm -hmm. because you'll have to do it to someone on top of you. That's putting loads of pressure. So the best way to start is to sign up for the Peru Scorsi, everyone, if you're listening, and go and train. Best way to start is Let's to just, start. <laughs> just to go. Go sign up for jujitsu. That's it. Mm. How else? Mm. Again, you're not going to pump iron and stuff. Oh, yeah, I'm going to get strong. Then I can sign up. You will never sign up. Sign up and go. That's the only way. That's okay. the only way. It's as simple as this, you know. Mm. I, looking at you, I can't say, oh, yeah, you need more flexibility. Mm. Oh, you need, you need bigger biceps. Mm. Your neck is too weak. You have to do something. No, no, no. Go to jiu-jitsu. Go sign up. That's the only way. That's the only way. Now that, you know, we live in the COVID era, how do you think that that has changed the jiu-jitsu overall? Or? There's been loads of support from the whole community worldwide. People releasing free videos, free content. Mm. You already have loads on YouTube. But then you have, it's, it's, it's actually very uh, special to jiu-jitsu where athletes are making their own instructionals. Mm. You know, it's, it's, 
you don't see it in football really or in ice hockey. I don't think there's any videos on how to play ice hockey or anything yeah, like this. You know, like this instructionals from this. from uh, um, Temu Selane, for example. Okay, this is our, no, no, no. In Jiu Jitsu, they do it. And then what they've done, they, they put it up for free. Mm. Like most of the big names, you know, there has been a lot of help. Mm. And uh, even instructors, they've started to do their courses online as well. So that's the way they try to to do it, and then. <laughs> but you need a partner. I was going to say that was my next step. There are some uh, <laughs> some wives have been taking as training partners for some a few uh, impromptu classes, I may say. But and then some I know some people I've met as well, you know, like friends. Okay, come to my garage, to, come to my living room, put some mats down, and you know that's the way. Mm. Again, there's always a solution. I need to get one of those mats here. Yeah. And do you think I have enough space? Yeah, just mind the TV, but yeah, 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 yeah. of course. Yeah, I mean, you don't I need buy much. a new no. one, you know. Yeah, it's broken. <laughs> I put it against the wall and you'll be fine. <laughs> but yeah, 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 of course. There's always a way, but the the support has been tremendous. Yeah. Okay, I think um, I'm not gonna promise anything, but you know, I got just encouragement. Uh, now I just have to look for for the classes mm -hmm. and the COVID mm -hmm. to you know get rid of. And yeah, unfortunately, you're gonna have to wait a little bit. Yeah. There's no more. And it, of, that I know of any uh, Perus Corsi or uh, starter course or anything like yeah. this at the moment for any any sport really yeah it's the times that's, that's, that we live in but hopefully soon that we get the uh, vaccine. vaccination yeah, yeah, for, yeah, yeah. for the COVID <clears throat> of yeah. February, March like it's about to back to business for yeah. like regular business for everyone then yeah. we might yeah, yeah. have uh, slightly we might have some hope mm. to return mm -hmm. into the normal ways that mm -hmm. we were mm -hmm. as a human being but um, do you have anything else? <laughs> oh, one more thing. One of the things that you do in your podcast is you ask people about a certain code oh, that yeah. they want to... The famous that code. Yeah, famous mm, code mm. or something that um, motivates them. And I was like, mm. hey, that is a really cool question. Mm. And it's not... Um, it's not like my way of doing this, but since you're doing, you know, you do that, mm. I want to hear what's your code. Like, like the quote or the... Um something I would put on a billboard and I mentioned it during our podcast and if you know me uh, a bit for what it is you know it's written on my uh, left calf actually it's discipline equals freedom so it's not from me it's from Jocko Willink if you don't know Google him search him he's a former Navy SEAL he has it on podcast loads of stuff uh, books and etc etc uh, no I'm not a meathead I'm not a military guy or anything like this but uh, since I started to listen to him first on Tim Ferriss and then Joe Rogan and then he's on podcast that's what he came up with and then he started to make sense reflecting on all those years like the last 30 or 25 years of my life that it's actually been in the background all the time discipline equals freedom in one way or another um, <clears throat> that's my quote not mine, but that's what I would give you. And I don't think I've been... I've got a new one, which is This is the Way from The Mandalorian, if you watch it. <laughs> but that's, you know, just a funny one. I told my son, I'm going to get it tattooed. No, you won't. But anyway, but yeah, the discipline equals freedom. It just speaks, I don't know, so much. And again, because I mentioned it during a podcast of mine with a, another guest, like uh, discipline has got this, this, this bad rap. But it's because I think it's misunderstood, most of it. You know, it's, you know, it's this less self-discipline. It's not discipline, I'm going to tell you to do something. No, it's to yourself. Where does it come from? It comes from you. Mm. And my son asked me once, he was five years old at the time, back of the car. Mm. Dad, where do you think discipline comes from? That's what he said. Well, I said, what do you think? You know, ah, good question. Yeah, yeah, I know you ask a good question, you know. Well, it comes from you, you know. And then he answered, and jujitsu? So yeah, of course, jujitsu as well. <laughs> it comes from you, discipline, and from jujitsu, both of them. Mm. So that's 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 the quote, that's what I have on my calf, and that's what I try to live by as well. You know, discipline equals freedom in everything, uh, all the areas of life. Mm. Um, again, I'm, I'm not like military and this and that, etc. But it's just mm. it speaks to me. Yeah. Do you think that's my that's my mantra whatever you want to call it but that's why i have in mind yeah that's discipline okay that that's what that's what brought me here that's discipline and yeah. it's not a bad thing no you know i think and it's, it gives me freedom uh, you know i think whatever. that's the one of the best things that <coughs> human beings can do to themselves yeah. is being yeah, yeah. disciplined well it makes you you know accountable take ownership of everything and do not de not depending on anyone if that's the goal but yeah discipline equals freedom it's really i remember it's like Putting in three words all those thoughts over the, all these years, 
And then he said it a few times and then I, he started to explain and I started to think about it. I'm like, God, that's what it is. Mm. All those years in the restaurant business in London, you know, building a relationship and it's it's all under the same umbrella. Yeah. And it is quite funny when it comes together like this, you know. Mm. And then you have another one from Musashi where it says, uh, well, when you know the way broadly, you will see it and everything. But it's the same thing, discipline equals freedom, you know. When yeah. you know the way broadly, you, you will see it and that's how I combine jujitsu, life, work, relationship all of this when you know the boy broadly you will see it and everything it's that was, that's like a good one. when you crack the code kind of yeah yeah, yeah. it's yeah, yeah. kind mm-hmm. of like mm-hmm. cracking the code yeah, yeah. and your code is yeah, yeah. that exactly the discipline is the code yeah yeah, yeah. is how much yeah, yeah. You there's care no other way there's no other genuinely way. Uh, mm-hmm. about certain things right and again he has the the bad rep but i think again i think he's misunderstood you know there's not just you're gonna do this because I told you to. No, no, no. That's not gonna work in the mm. long term. Maybe just once. Mm. But no, it's for yourself. You know? yeah. It's what you, you know. That's yeah. My second <laughs> final question: Do you think in? Uh, do you think that you are a disciplined person? Mm. How do you see yourself? I can always do better. I can always. There's always more improvement. There's always room to always, improve. Always, always, always. Because it's it's the discipline equals freedom. It's a daily thing. It's every minute, every hour. I know it sounds like, oh my God, uh, I need to be careful. No, no, no. But it's... It's a state it's, of it's, mind. It's, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, it, and it's, uh, it's a continuity, you know. He also says like unmitigated daily discipline in all things. And that's what it is. And again, it doesn't mean, you know, I have to be hardcore, uh, full on. No, it's not about that. It's trying to be organized, trying to make up for maybe space here and there that maybe something's going to come up but then if i've got the discipline to organize it i'm ready for it mm-hmm. even though it wasn't planned okay yeah, yeah that's planned mm. i didn't know how long the bot- podcast is going to last well i planned my afternoon this way mm. so i can't i don't i don't have to tell you sorry i need to go mm-hmm. that, that would be not not good at all would yeah. it you know but again simple not easy yeah yeah and i think that's why we shy away a lot mm. <laughs> from as as people myself first you know mm. you want to go to the you know easy way easy route uh, what's the what's the reward nothing or it's the, like temporary there is a quote that i forgot easy life uh easy life oh, yeah yeah it's or, from i think it was from a was it from a wrestling trainer or something yeah 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 i remember oh, yeah, yeah. what was that ah does he put it hard choices easy life Easy choices, hard life. I think something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. that should be. But yeah, my discipline. I try, I try to be disciplined, but for my own good, you know. Yeah. But yeah, sure. because otherwise I don't function. So yeah, if I if I say something that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna organize everything. Mm. So yeah, I'm gonna do it. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to drop on us? Um, well, no. Well, yeah. I don't know. Thank you very much. I don't know how long we're on, but it's been a long time. Uh, maybe people have fallen asleep with uh, whatever I've been saying. No, <laughs> Thank you are. very much. I'm very happy. Very happy to uh, have been a guest here. First time for me. Uh, if there's still anyone listening, um, yeah, remember this, that we, we're going to die. <laughs> Ooh, I came for hope. Well, don't come here for hope. <laughs> I'm going to die. No, no, just do something about it. Do something about it. It's, 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 you know, it's a gift. I know, I don't know what it sounds like to you out there, but yeah, it's a gift that we can wake up in the morning. Do something about it, you know. No regrets. You, you should have a few, but like no regret of, oh, I should have done that. No, 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 no. You, time will go like that and it's gone. You don't get it back. The workout that you say, I'm not going to do, you're not going to get it back. It's gone. Mm. Even if you try to work out twice as hard next day, still that workout is gone. And it could that, have been your best workout and you don't want to miss on that. So yeah, uh, stay safe, safe, healthy, and just be respectful to one another. Yeah, mm. And you know, yeah, thank you very much for listening up to here. Thank you very much again for, yes, for the and invite. Your, uh, and Johan's podcast is Suljetut Ovet. I'll leave the link below here. Uh, go and check it out. Thank I you. think it's really cool yeah, I need what to, you're doing. Yeah, thank you. I need to amend a few things, but yeah, I need to get back on the, on the horse for this one. You see, more discipline to get more people <laughs> in. Yeah, it's every day. It's, it's the whole time. Mm. But uh, yeah, be be safe, be respectful and do something you're gonna die yeah <laughs> thank you for the invite people you're gonna die yeah thank if you, you learn something <laughs> that should be the thing that yeah. you're gonna learn can i do but a shout out at all to anyone you yeah, for sure yeah. uh do you want it on a camera no, no, don't or, worry yeah. just sh- shout out to everyone who trains with me at loop martial arts 
uh, Jiu Jitsu and then even uh, Luke Kopaini, all this. Thank you for uh, thank you for the training, for the feedback. Thank you to all the senseis, well, so instructors over there. Uh, thank you, Finland, <laughs> for having me here uh, in, the, in the country. Thank you for people to, who come to my practice. I really appreciate what you do. And for me, it's, 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 it's my whole life, all this. So thank you very much. I'm very grateful. Uh, even if you came just once through the door, thank you very much. And um, yeah, so that's it. Podcast, uh, podcast. Shout out to everyone who listened to the podcast. And yeah, that's it. Thank you. And thank you for Johan for coming here. Uh, it's been a great pleasure, and I learned a lot of you know different things well, from hopefully you. Hopefully, and useful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely useful. I hope uh, I didn't bore anyone. Or at least I found it very useful. And you know, this is not the final time you're coming mm-hmm. here so mm-hmm. you know That's we'll okay. keep this rolling every now and then <laughs> uh whenever we have if you have any stories or mm-hmm. something you mm-hmm. want to share mm-hmm. or make a vlog about you know mm-hmm. you can always contact me all right thank um, you i'm, I'm good here to, know. to serve I'm good to know. what i I'm good try to, know. to do thank you all right that was it. it thank you Jan, for an awesome interview i learned a lot from you and i'm really grateful to have you as a guest if you found this podcast to be interesting make sure you subscribe on youtube or follow me on instagram and everywhere where i put my material so instagram spotify itunes and also make sure you follow and listen to Jan's podcast sulia to Ovet. it's really interesting and i think you guys will like it if you like this episode other than that stay safe until next time bye